significant as that? Well, I think it's very significant. Uh, the Eagles going with an unchanged forward line, particularly uh, Shaki and Taylor. Uh, they're predominant up there, kicking a lot of goals. Port Adelaide a bit fragile up forward tonight. Um, it's interesting, over the last four games, both the Magpies and the Eagles are within five points of uh, their total scores over that game. But interestingly enough, uh, defensively, the Eagles have managed to keep their uh, opposition forwards to ten less goals. So adding all those things together with a tougher uh, defence and a uh, more efficient forward line, uh, it might be the Eagles' night. Port have had the bye. Is that a big advantage? This time of year it probably is. Taking into account that coaches have got a tough summer program, they won't let up just for the Foundation Cup. They've had to travel, hard grounds, hot weather, hard weights, long distance running. Uh, it all means that players get pretty tired, so Port Adelaide with the rest, uh, that'll certainly help. Are the Eagles physically and mentally tough enough to beat Port in a final? Well, we'll find out tonight, but uh, it's a good point. I know that uh, Bruce Winter would, uh, would be centering on that. If they're not tonight, they will be by June. Uh, we all know that if you can't beat Port during the minor round, you certainly won't beat them in the finals. And the difference that, uh, uh, that exists between the Eagles and Port Adelaide right now, I believe, is a physical approach. And look at Port Adelaide. Mm. Uh, they bond together. It's a culture down there. They're arrogant, they're tough, and uh, it's part of their finals preparation. Just mentioning Bond there, Cockatoo Collins, Bond and Foster all named on the interchange. Is that a surprise to you? <laughs> no, it's not. Maybe I shouldn't say anything, but uh, they've all been disciplined. They were late for training Sunday morning. And, uh, well, it's summer. You're allowed to go out and have a good night in the summer. But uh, uh, Port Adelaide, their resolve is to make sure that everybody follows the rules. So, regardless of the final, those boys start on the bench. What about the forward setup of the Eagles? Taylor, Shackey, Filippo and Morfitt? Yeah, those players have uh, got a lot of experience. Morford to uh, 1990, 99 goals he kicked. He's been injured. He's back tonight. He's excited. And he said today, uh, I noticed in the press, that uh, Bruce Winters geared them up to another level. And I would suspect he means a tougher, harder physical approach. And very quickly, the defence uh, of the Eagles, how do you rate that? Well, I think it's, uh, it was a bit fragile last year. I think with, uh, with the way it's lining up right now, it's not too bad, but uh, it'll be under a lot of pressure. But as we've said, uh, they've been very efficient. They've kept their, uh, their opposition forwards to 10 goals less than Port Adelaide have managed. OK, the game about to start the Foundation Cup Grand Final. Your commentator, Stephen Trigg, and to take up the call, here's David Mackay. Thank you, Mark. A big night of football ahead. The Eagles, quest for Premiership glory. It's been a long time. Port Adelaide traditional grand finalists a big crowd at football park both sides have won their four foundation cup clashes to get to this position and the night in question nervous players the opening few minutes will be hectic no doubt of that the action coming to you on abc sport as umpire kevin chambers puts the ball to ground and starts the big one the 1993 foundation cup grand final Port Adelaide kicking to right of screen. Peter Swartz, the Eagle captain, won the toss and kicked to the northern end or left of screen. A melee of players develops. The umpire picks out an early free kick. It's Stephen Williams for Port Adelaide with the ball. The Eagles have started with an extra player at half back. Left their forward line open. They've got the numbers in defence. Northeast under pressure from Tottenham gets the kick away. Mead couldn't complete the mark. Wakeland under a tackle from Neiman puts the ball to ground. Schwartz will need to work hard for this one. He did the captain and he drives it to the outer side. Morford back from a fitness cloud. An ankle injury gives it off to Zilla. Chapman, who's been brilliant in the Foundation Cup out of the centre, drives it to centre half forward. Shaggy beaten by Greg Phillips. And as you heard Neville mentioned earlier, both sides a 25 metre penalty imposed. As Neville mentioned earlier, both sides exactly as named, and this clash will be a terrific one tonight. Shaki versus Phillips. The big man Phillips gets on with it, kicks towards centre half forward. Good mark taken by Morfitt in defence. Had injury problems over the last month and a half or so. Long kick, looking for Shaki. Up he goes from behind. He's got it. Strong hand, Shaki. Very active through half forward both away from the goals and towards, and he's really going to create some problems for Port. Filippo with the lead. Shaki goes into the forward pocket, looking for Filippo from behind, though. And a big strong mark taken there by Chalmers. And, of course, this man can take some marks as well. Unbelievable to think that he's only 19 years of age. The maturity, the time that he's been around the club, terrific player for Port Adelaide. The kick wide out to Hutton, who did the damage against the Redlegs a few weeks ago, chipped in with that great late goal that got Port Adelaide home and therefore into this position. Darren Smith did well under pressure from Rogers. He was clobbered, in fact. The ball's gone and the players want to go on with it. Darren Smith not happy with the attention he received and he picks up a three. Well, in the Eagles' rooms before the game, there was a uh, quote on the board, straight on line and tough, and the Eagles have started that way indeed. Kennedy went for the ball, missed it. 
Hayes over the top of the pack. Zilla couldn't get out, neither could Geneva for Port Adelaide. It's a big pack and now a bounce. And in key clashes as well. Darren Smith at centre half forward, directly opposed to Andrew Rogers. And uh, both ends of the ground, the key positions are well served by experience and very good players. Williams with a high kick. You're watching the Foundation Cup Grand Final live on ABC Sport. Chance now. Hutton, left footer. Misses to the left-hand side. Magpies on the board. It's David Hutton loves to get down inside the 50-metre line. We've seen him through this Foundation Cup series do it so often. He loves to kick goals, and he, when he gets down inside of half forward, he's very hard to stop. On that occasion, just off line, fired away at the goals and was, was unfortunately for Port Adelaide off target. And it's both sides as named, and uh, as we saw or spoke a moment ago about those key positions being critical, around the edges there are some big matchups as well, and we'll mention those shortly. Mark Kennedy from fullback for the Eagles. He's earned his place. Alan Schwartz, the injured fullback, uh, might have trouble getting back in. The target was Neiman. He missed it. Underneath this ball, Shane Brewer brings it grandstand side into space. Goes Tottenham. Pushed across the line by Northeast. We've played just on three minutes of the first turn. Paisy and Gaffney is one. Looking forward to that one out here at half back and half forward, respectively. A battle of the speedsters. And it'll be interesting to see how that one finishes up. On centre wing here in front of the members. Chance now for Zilla. Got caught but did well. Now Schwarz from half back. Kicks to left, half forward. Good mark taken by the skipper. Oh, gee, stretch then did Phillips. Hand pass quickly across to Williams from half back. Now swings play toward right, half forward. Up they go. No mark taken down there. Chance for Port Adelaide. Here's Gaffney, it was. Short passes on by Brewer. Not all that effective. Zilla was held on by Williams. The umpire sees it, gives the free kick. Worked hard for that, Zilla put himself in position to earn the free kick. It's a long ball. That's been a feature of the Eagles this year. They're long kicking it. Taylor, there's another feature. They want a great mark. The locking arms of uh, Phillips and Shackie enabled Taylor to soar over the top and take a good strong mark. Schwarz, the captain, working hard. Possession number four in the opening minute. Shackey beaten to that one. Phillips took front position. Rosonico at the back. Sweeps it into northeast. Back to Rosonico in the one-two. Hugging the boundary line. It's a long kick underneath this one. McKay just got a hand of ball. Good enough to push it forward to Smith. Smith's running forward. That's Rowan Smith to Darren Smith. Into the open goal. No, it's across the top. Lead. Lead into goals. Port Adelaide's first goal. They're one goal one. The Eagles haven't scored. And we're four and a half minutes into the first turn. And the look on Darren Smith's face perhaps says it all. Really pumped up Port Adelaide. In the rooms before the game, there seemed to be an air of confidence. They were quite relaxed. Conversely, in the Eagles' rooms, it was quite tense. But the look on Darren Smith's face there as he charged towards goal, intelligently over the top towards Meade, was very good for Port Adelaide. But the look on the Smith face said all. Keyed up and ready for a big one. So Meade with one. Port Adelaide on the board. The Magpies are 1 1 7. The Eagles yet to score five minutes. First quarter, 93 Foundation Cup Grand Final coming to you on ABC Sport. A special hello to all of our viewers in the country. The Magpies and the Eagles. There's been a big build up to this game throughout the week. Magpies at start favourite, but the Eagles are confident. After the bounce at centre, in goes McEnany. Can't control the football, they've got him. And there'll be a ball up on the attacking side of centre for Port Adelaide. Yes, one of the reasons that Port Adelaide will start favourite is they have nine players with 100 plus games and they're still missing a couple of key players as the ball goes forward. Eagles only with four players over 100 games. Now Spear, caught under the ball. It was a great tackle by Century. Kennedy almost threw that ball out to Geyer. Geyer hugs the boundary line. Good defensive work. He went short. Chapman couldn't gather it in. Over the top of a Brewer. Now that's a throw. Gets it out to Spear. This is good running for the Eagles. Schwartz under pressure. Oh, that's a throw. Well, Umpy, what do you reckon? McEnany. Well, that's a one-handed attempt as well. The umpires are letting it go. Perhaps it's good umpiring. Chapman to the outer side. Shackey first one. Oh. There's a throw. Shoot. Well, what's this? Rugby. Third time lucky, David, on the call. But that one was certainly a throw. Burton squares the football to a more central location and the good mark taken by Chalmers. Coming at him a little late there was Chapman. Chalmers gets on with it, kicks to right half for the dangerous northeast. Here's danger for sure and certain. Gaffney about 55 metres out, long bomb. It'll fall just short, not through, well defended by the Eagles. 
The Eagles at the moment are just being sucked in. They're looking for the ball rather than keeping their balance. All in the name of Endeavour. The spoil from Neiman 3 was very good. But just in the name of Endeavour at the moment, the Eagles are at the ball in numbers. Just perhaps losing a little bit of their, their form of their side. And it'll take some time to settle down. Oh, Kennedy, that was dangerous. Went short to Neiman. The big fellow is mobile. It's a long ball to the outer side. Kicks it to his opposite number. A kick behind play. And Chalmers with the mark. Plays on quickly. Borlase was looking for the ball in short, but the big man opts for the long kick. It's good work for Adelaide. They're good at that. Oh, it's a terrific mark in the finish. Jason Spear. One of the key defenders, Jason Spear. I'll expect big things from him tonight. Long kick. Phillips trying to work his way in front. Oh, cleverly done by the big man. G starring so far. Here's Williams from centre. Up toward left, half forward. Good mark. Up and stretch. Got it. Greg Phillips, season number 18, standing firm. Didn't play the last outing of the Foundation Cup, and prior to that was only on the ground for a half at a time, really exerting his influence at the moment. Here's Hutton, 50 metres out, long drop punt. Looks pretty good. Another one. First goal to Hutton. Another one to Port Adelaide. 2 2. Ominous signs. The Eagles get the score, and we've played eight minutes of the first quarter. Well, we spoke earlier in this game and previously in the Foundation Cup games that David Hutton as a wingman is a very attacking player. He loves to get inside of 50 and moreover, he loves to kick goals. The Port attitude to, win to winning this Foundation Cup was evident from the very outset in their Central District game at Port Augusta and it looks like they're going on with it already. At the centre, Port Adelaide two goals, two. They've jumped the Eagles. They're 14 points. The Eagles aren't yet on the board. Pesh got it out to Tottenham. Cleverly done. A long ball to centre half forward. It's Phillips again. The man Mountain punches it towards the boundary line. New chum Burton took the knock, rode it well from Pays, gets the kick away, and Gaffney sits under this, this one. Rowan Smith shovels it forward, gives the opportunity for Gaffney to put a long ball to Darren Smith. Oh, he did well, Smith. He got locked in the right position. Setry, this is physical. Good running by Port Adelaide. Williams, who's done so much damage early, pushes it in. Is it touch or is it a goal? The goal up by says it's through. So Port Adelaide, three goals, 220. Lead the Eagles, no score. We've played nine and a half minutes into the first term. What a dream start by Port Adelaide. It's just the start that one of these sides wanted to get away to. To get the jump in a final on the other side is critical. And Stephen Williams playing in the centre, ran very hard, found himself some space. It was just over the head in the end of Mead, who tried his best to get a hand to it and take the mark. Couldn't do so. Luckily for Port Adelaide, the first to Williams. Port Adelaide, three goals, 2.20. The Eagles yet to score. Ten minutes, first quarter. Chalmers and Neiman, important out of the centre. Gaffney, the hand pass was uh, not good, though. And Morfitt with a long kick toward left half forward. No mark taken down there by Filippo. Couldn't quite control the football. The Magpies with a chance now, although coming in quickly as Chapman. Got it across to McEnany. Missed the hand pass. Geneva goes in northeast as well. Now Pesh. Oh, fumbling there by Schwarz. Now pays. Free kick. Magpies. The Eagles, too many fumbles at the moment. They're just taking their time to settle down. They need to calm it. Just get the one clean take of the ball and be away. Schwarz, so just a little too much aggression on Northeast. Bobbed him high. That was what the free kick was for. Now, Jamie Tate jumps on top of Gaffney. That's a headlock, but well, it's a ball up. And, David, isn't it uh, indicative of what we saw before the game? Port Adelaide rooms, calm, relaxed, focused. The Eagles a little edgy and uh, just a little uh, uptight. The Eagles didn't do well last year in their finals outing. They were beaten by Glenelg in the preliminary. A lot of people thought they might have got through to have a crack at Port Adelaide last oh. year, but they've certainly beefed out. There's a free kick. It was against Paul A's. It was on McEnany. The umpire said he was claimed when he didn't have possession. So McEnany playing on a wing tonight. He's roved throughout the Foundation Cup. Centres up the ball. Beautifully placed kick, and he's picked out Shane Brewer. The former Horsham lad has found a niche at half back for the Eagles. Pushes it towards Taylor, who's out at centre half forward, it would appear. A handball from Zilla to Shaggy. It's a two pronged attack across half forward for the Eagles. As Shaggy goes to goals, and the Eagles are on the board. 11 and a half minutes in the first term. Shaggy kicks his first. The Eagles, one straight goal. Trail Port Adelaide, three goals, two. A couple of key possessions for Lawrence Shaggy early in this game. His immediate opponent has also started well, and that's Port Adelaide skipper Greg Phillips. But on this occasion, Phillips not in screen, sat back in the space inside half forward, was looking for the one that came over the top, 
when it came to Shaq, he was out of position and Shaq nonchalantly, perhaps not nonchalantly, but quite casually around the corner and a good kick. See, they needed that. Port Adelaide, three goals, 220. The Eagles, one goal. We played 12 minutes, first quarter. Kicked by Neiman. It's about 25, 30 metres only. Now Burton, now the whistle goes. The umpire gives a free kick to Port Adelaide. They play on. Burton with a long bomb, but getting back and defending. Good mark taken by Brewer, did that comfortably. Half back. Good kick, looking for Shackie. A long way down from centre half forward or his half forward flank. Out of bounds in front of the members. And a good clash of bodies. The way that the Eagles are working it is that when Lawrence Shackie comes downfield looking for some possession of the ball, that Andrew Taylor leaves that forward pocket position and slots straight into what would normally be centre-half forward, and he's being picked up by Rosonico. Shackie is trying to run Phillips out of this game. That would be the Eagles' early plan. It might work later in the match if Phillips runs out of puff. McEnany goes to ground with the ball, and it's a bounce. Almost 13 minutes gone. Port Adelaide, three goals, two. The Eagles, one straight goal. We're coming to you live from Football Park on ABC Sport. What a terrific night of footy. Yes, Will picked up about that issue of uh, Phillips trying to run him ragged. He was keen today when we spoke to him. And uh, he'd be loving this. He'd want to run this game right out. Nank Pies, three goals, 2.20. The Eagles are one goal, six. 13 minutes, first quarter. In a very exciting start. Pesh dragged to the ground by Borlase, and there'll be another ball up. To take that issue a little further, Greg Phillips, with that limited preparation, has set himself for game one next week against West Adelaide. It'll be interesting to see how far he can run the game out. Yes, Greg Phillips uh, missed last week with a hip injury. But he has worked pretty hard. Oh, Chapman missed it. He's been so very good during the Foundation Cup, but he's really just a bit nervous tonight. Hart, what a terrific mark running towards the pack. This fellow has plenty of courage. He delivers the ball up beautifully put to me, streaming out from full forward. He marked it 50 metres out, and he is capable of getting the distance. Yes, well, there's not much breeze at Football Park tonight. Absolutely ideal conditions. And uh, from 50 to 55, should just carry it. Only 40 games under his belt. It's a long ball. It'll just drop short. Hands go up. Wakeland couldn't take it in. Over the top of it, Brewer. But Wakeland gathers it in again. Under pressure from McEnany. He pushes it off. Guy did pretty well. Ball A's got the kick away. Chapman pressured by Jennifer. Oh, there's a free. It is. It's a Port Adelaide free kick. McKay will pick up the ball. He got clobbered by both Tate and Andy Pays. He did well. It's the advantage of being first in at the football. The attack on the player was lazy from both Eagles players. Darren Mackay or McKay to get the advantage of the free kick. McKay, who opened up terrifically well just a few games ago against West Adelaide, I think it was. And now there's a 25-metre penalty. Well, the Eagles are just a little bit flustered early in this match. I couldn't hear a whistle on that. But, uh, Mark Kennedy was the man on the mark. There was no whistle forthcoming. Very quick to bring him back. So McKay gets his first. We've played 15 minutes into the first turn. Port Adelaide, four goals, 226. The Eagles, one straight goal, six. The margin now out to 20 points. And uh, we'll see Darren McKay set himself in front. He's playing out of a forward pocket at the moment. Put himself in front at the bottom of the pack and gave himself every opportunity. At the moment, we started this game off thinking it was going to be a battle of uh, the Port Adelaide reliable and experienced defence against the options that uh, the Eagles have up forward. And at the moment, it's Port Adelaide defence right on top. The Magpies are 26, the Eagles are six. 4-2 to one goal, almost 16 minutes of the first quarter. Chalmers from the left, Neiman from the right. 38 is Pesh for the Eagles. Up they go, Pesh has got it, the hand pass quickly. Now Neiman, left footer towards centre half, or Chackie, oh gee, that was a terrific stretch. The, the really good thing about that was Neiman's second effort in the centre of the ground. Hit the ground, took the option quickly around the corner and provided the Eagles with another player in the centre of the ground. Well, that was deceptive. It looked as though it was too far for him. Already has one goal. Drop punt. Low. Left half forward. He's looking for someone down there. He's got more than he's been paid. Well, the crowd don't like it. The Port Adelaide supporters, at least. The Port Adelaide decision, uh, the supporters are bound to be just uh, a touch biased on it, but that was certainly a mark. Morford controlled it well, and uh, Port Adelaide played just fractionally late on the scene. Now, here's one of these men that we talked about in terms of options up forward for the Eagles, and uh, he's an important cog in the Eagles' side tonight. Well, Scotty, if ever you needed to kick a goal, it's right now. Scott Morford, about 45 metres out on a 45-degree angle. Bang! Straight through. Good angle there. Straight through the middle. Scott Morford gets his first, and the Eagles do claw back. Well, Morford... 
last year was uh, the top goal scorer for the Eagles with 58 goals did it all very well was very active through that area and uh, tonight gets an opportunity at half forward much of his football in the past has been out of a forward pocket tonight at half forward his activity will be very important for the Eagles four goals to Port Adelaide two straight goals the Eagles the margin back to 14 points and Morfitt it certainly appears to have recovered from that ankle operation that he had Sentry works hard for the ball taken to ground by Tottenham also back after a rest and it's a bounce Gee, it's tough work in the center of the ground all players in there with big strong bodies and they're going in fiercely for the footy that's where Port Adelaide uh, have the ascendancy at the moment Tottenham breaks that stranglehold drives it towards full forward Danny Hughes did well the big fist away Zilla missed it Lyle did well picked up the crumb got it off to Danny Hughes who blasts one into space McEnany Queen Bowl Burton there 14 is Schwartz 14 Burton for Port Adelaide Schwartz did well got away a handball but it was stolen by Borlase he's claimed by Zilla isn't holding the ball no said the umpire play on Schwartz to McEnany is good work this is Pesh hugging the boundary line Drifts one into space, but Brett Chalmers, the ruck from the kick behind play, marks deep in defence. Very resolute was Chalmers. Long kick, looking for someone at half back, getting back as Pays and Gaffney with him. Pays did well. Brilliant hand pass quickly across to Tate. The Eagles are looking a little better. Phillips straight down his throat. Tate had two options on the inside, missed both of them. If he'd given it off, there was a set shot for uh, at least a running shot free for goal. Unfortunately, went the kick and Phillips just stood his ground inside centre-half back and took the easiest of marks. Phillips gets 25 metres, goes out wide to the uh, loose man and that's Setry. The Magpies looking dangerous again. There's another loose man out there. It's Tim Ginnivar. 201 games, short towards centre-half forward. Up they go. No mark. Tape, well done. Well anticipated. Quickly got it across to Spear and the Eagles out of trouble. They did it pretty well, but Burton marks. So it's going back just as quickly as it comes out. Zilla did well. He stole it. The wingman. To half forward, Shacky and Phillips one on one, and again it's Greg Phillips. What a great game he's playing. Oh, terrific. Doesn't he look slim as well? He's lost a bit of weight. He's really sharp at the moment. He's very excited because he's been named captain. There was some uh, conjecture as to whether he'd go on this year. Williams uh, hand passes back to uh, Geneva, who's got the free kick. Tim Geneva, long one toward uh, full forward. Oh, what a terrific mark over the top taken by McKay. 55, 60 metres out, too far out to score. Long kick, looking for Meade in front. Couldn't control it. Spears got two or three to beat down there. One of them is Wakeland, hasn't had a touch. Sterrell Wakeland at full forward. And Jason Spear, I thought he was out of position on that one. But uh, just at the right time, got a fist to the ball. Forced it wide. And a bounce down right, a left forward pocket for Port Adelaide. Margin 14 points, 20 minutes played. The Eagles need a quick reply to get back within touch of the Magpies. McKay goes to ground under pressure from Neiman, and the big Ruckman's doing plenty of work in defence for the Eagles. And uh, one just senses that the Eagles are settling to the task. They took their 10 minutes to get it out of their system. Settling down now, and they'll go on with the job. It's always going to happen as the ball goes across the line. And Evel Roberts mentioned it early before the game. They were very nervous, a big crowd, and they're a young side. But, oh, gee, they're... Uh, they're taking this game right up to Port Adelaide. And I think we've got three terrific quarters of footy ahead of us. Well, they fought back because there were danger signs there. The Magpies were getting away with uh, a lot. Here we uh, see uh, Schwarz gets the hand pass. Chapman couldn't pick up. Morfitt likewise went across to jump over the football. Now the dangerous Taylor. Drop punt, an awkward kick for Shackey down there. Did very well. Phillips has got him. Shackey out to goal. A terrific goal by Shackey. His second. Nothing Phillips could do. Well, wasn't that a magnificent piece of work by the big man? A very agile big man at that, we, we should add. And his contest, centre-half forward versus Phillips at centre-half back, has been just great so far. Now, Taylor's actually the man who's assuming that position because Shackey's looking to run the big man around. Off of the ground, pretty much a drop kick, it looked like, in the end. And he'll be pleased with that one. I should think after the game, he'll be bragging about the old-style droppy that he put through for a goal at the 21-minute mark of the, of the first term. It was a drop kick, and Shackey and Phillips, the big bear, takes on the new chum. Shackey has done well. Chalmers got the ball to ground. It was Totten with the kick towards half forward. There's a free kick behind play. The umpire indicated Taylor was holding a Port Adelaide player, and Taylor and Northeast just have a tee to tee. Northeast, a rough and tough character. The Magpies go short. Chalmers, oh, he tried to take on Chapman. Not all that successfully. Here's Williams mopping up. 
defensive side of centre. Good kick. They just steady things down a bit. Setry from the wing. Kicks to right half court. Smith. Good mark. In front. Held it. Play on. Gaffney. Kicks toward full forward. No mark taken down there. Over the shoulder. Surely. Umpire didn't seem to think so. Magpie fans not happy about that. Neiman, tape, shorthand passes. McEnany out of defence to the wing. All Port Adelaide, though, kicked to the wrong part of town. Big chance for Chalmers now. Goes across to Borlase. Now Rowan Smith, 50 metres out. Long kick by Smith. It's offline to the left-hand side through for a behind. The Eagles just need to settle it down inside uh, their defensive zone. The quick kick out of defence to the back-playing Chalmers is never going to pay off for them. They really need to run it out as they've started to do in patches so far run it out of their defensive zone, do it with some purpose, lift the eyes and do it purposefully down the ground. Well, both sides are playing their Ruckman behind play for the Eagles. It's Neiman who's uh, working deep in defence for the Magpies, but Chalmers is pushing the ball back in just as quick. Now an opportunity for Pesh. He was tackled beautifully by Braden Lyle, but the umpire said it was too low. It was a trip. Well, I can't believe that. That, uh, that tackle looked fairly and squarely around the hips. I was amazed to look up and see the umpire holding his feet and calling it a trip. Well, Kevin Chambers was pretty clear on the call. No doubt what it was for. Taylor tried to thump it forward. At the back of the pack, Shackey. Phillips again in the way. Taylor came in and double man. Phillips took him to ground and it's a blue behind play. Pesh just cop one late from Williams as the kick goes forward. To ground goes Danny Hughes. Now ball A's. Good defensive work by Port Adelaide. Forces into space. But this is Neiman, the kick behind play on the half volley was beautifully done, the big man. And look at this, it's Morford who has one goal already. 23 and a half minutes in, he'll steady and shoot for goal. Oh, don't underestimate that piece of work by Neiman. That was absolutely superb. The one take, he was at full charge, the big fellow, and uh, was good enough then in the end to lift the eyes and look for the, uh, the half forward flanker in Morford, who's having a shot now from around 40 out. Morford led the competition in goals in 90. One with 99 goals. He just missed his turn. He got 52 last year. And Taylor's mark right on the line. Well, things have turned around for the Eagles. It was all Port Adelaide in the opening minutes, but the Eagles are fighting back. They trail by nine points, a 25-metre penalty. It's funny how the pendulum swings. We mentioned it earlier. The Eagles look to be just settling down a little bit. They're starting to, as this game goes on, just find their feet on it, lift the eyes to start to be a little more poised on it. And now Taylor won't miss from here. So 24 minutes gone, the Eagles pop through their fourth, and Taylor gets his first. So the Eagles, four goals straight, 24 points. Trail Port Adelaide, four goals, 327, and we're nearly into quarter time. Well, prior to that mark being taken, I was going to suggest that Sam Filippo, who in the first, let's say, I think it was three of these Foundation Cup games, played at centre-half back, then in the fourth was shifted to centre-half forward, the more familiar position from last season, and uh, tonight is at full forward with the theory in mind, of course, that, we're, that they're running Greg Phillips around. But he looks a little out of position at the moment, Sam Filippo. Great character shown here by the Eagles. The Magpies lead 4-3-27. The Eagles are four straight goals, 24. We've played 25 minutes of the first quarter. It has been a beauty here at Football Park. Gaffney runs onto it, flicks the hand pass away. Burton now from centre wing. Long bomb looking for Darren Smith. Had his eye on the football, couldn't control the mark. Good work by Spear. Quickly across, though, to Geyer, who's in the back pocket. He clears to the wing. Magpies and Eagles there, two against two. Child run down very well there. Good tackle on Neiman. It's quarter time here. It was Zilla, in fact. And the Eagles and Port Adelaide in this very exciting Foundation Cup clash. The Magpies lead by three points. What a great quarter of footy it was. It took the Eagles a little time, perhaps 10 minutes, to settle to the task. Port Adelaide came out with consummate arrogance. They played it like veteran, the veterans that they are, and they have so much experience and a blend of, uh, of youthful exuberance in this side as well. They jumped out of the blocks the best. It took the Eagles some time to settle to the task, but when they did, their key forwards, again, as we've seen so often through this Foundation Cup, were the people who did the damage, and we've really got a, a grand final on our hands. So at quarter time, after a terrific fight back by the Eagles, Port Adelaide, four goals, 327. Lead the Eagles, four straight goals, 24. You're viewing the Foundation Cup Grand Finals, live and exclusive on ABC Sport.
Can their love bridge the cultural gap? Don't marry her. No need to these days. Your grandfather doesn't care for him. Well, what about what you think? Dad, this is racist. And Su Lin has a secret. Uh, it's uh, Su Lin Chen there, please. Sorry, no. Any message? I promised him long before I met you. you. Can't just marry and then walk away. A most unusual wedding. That's GP, 8.30 Wednesday. Donald Sindon is currently in a play called Out of Order. Joy Baluk, the controversial mayor of Port Augusta, has been out of order most of her life. I thought it'd be fun to put them together and see what happened. Why don't you join me in conversation with Donald Sindon and Joy Baluk this Thursday at 6. And welcome back to Football Park. Fantastic first uh, game uh, here earlier on. The Toyota Talent team up against the Glenelg Under-18s. And in the end, the Glenelg Under-18s won 14 goals, 8-92. They defeated the Toyota Talent team, 11 goals, 8, 74. Neville Roberts joins us now. Neville, what a fantastic performance that was by the Eagles, I thought, to get back into the game. Well, it was. It took them till uh, nearly the 18-minute mark, I think, with Scott Morford to uh, go from this grandstand side. But from the panic in the, uh, in the first 10 or 15 minutes, they turned it around to get the numbers to the ball, uh, to be a bit physical, uh, to start use the ball a bit better. And despite how well Greg Phillips played uh, at centre-half back, David, Lawrence Shackey still finished with two goals and uh, and probably the best forward. Well, at this stage, he's the leading goal scorer. He has two for the Eagles. Singles came from Taylor and Morford. While for Port Adelaide, there's four goal scorers. They're McKay, Williams, Hutton and Mead. They could have got flustered, couldn't they, the Eagles, David? Well, they showed tremendous maturity. I think the thing about them last season is they did uh, fail under pressure. Tonight, they've shown that they're ready to take that next step. Port Adelaide are the measuring stick and the Eagles... Eagles are taking it right up to them. Well, there were some fantastic highlights in that fir first quarter. One of them was the Darren McKay mark. And uh, let's have a look at that uh, in vision. A beautiful jump, got the ride, and uh, there was little or nothing uh, the Eagles defenders could do from that. He's a talent around goals, an opportunist, and uh, eyes on the ball. He got the lift, and uh, what a magnificent catch. Just about ready to go for the second quarter of the Foundation Cup Grand Final. Here's David McKay. Thank you again, Mark. Stephen Williams left of screen. Brett Chalmers in ruck as umpire Mark Westgarth starts the second quarter of this Foundation Cup Grand Final with the Eagles trailing by three points. Port Adelaide will be kicking left of screen. It's the Eagles to the right and Romano Negri now in ruck for the Eagles. Zilla almost got the kick away, got out the handball to Chapman, was good work. Stephen Williams stole the loose ball, thought he caught one high, but the umpire missed it and again it's a bounce. Let's not forget that uh, both teams have won uh, all their games leading into this uh, Foundation Cup final. Four apiece, Evan Stevens. Early stages of the second quarter. Chalmers might have won that. Morford tried to knock it over toward Totten, who uh, was busy there trying to do something with the football. Eventually, he's caught for holding the ball and Port Adelaide to get the free kick. Kicking to the left of screen. Northeast, short pass, looking for Chalmers, who's loose in the centre. McEnany comes at him late. Now Chalmers from about 85 metres. Gee, that's a big kick. Looking for Mead. He jumped too early. Chance now for the Eagles to mop up. Tape. Clever hand pass, although in the end it went straight to Smith. Now an opportunity for Sentry. Picked up quickly by Bond. Goal! Great start, the Magpies. Bond gets his first. He's on the ground for the first time. And again, we see the value of... Uh... Brett Chalmers lurking in defence. He's played a very crucial role, dropping back on Lawrence Shackey to help Greg Phillips out. It's going to be a tough night for Greg Phillips with the young legs of Shackey running around. But uh, like Neiman did in the last part of that first quarter, uh, Brett Chalmers up through the centre, got the ball in. But watch the quick hands of Port Adelaide here. A mistake. Bad hands. The Eagles put Spear under pressure. Setri quick, gets it out and runs it in to bond a great goal. Just what the Eagles didn't need, another Port goal. Port five goals, three, the Eagles four straight goals, and we've only played two minutes into the second term. Chalmers, gee, shoveled that out. Borlay's got a hurried kick away of sorts. It was well done. Rogers on the half volley towards half forward. Oh, Pesh was pushed out of that one. No doubt about that. Lyle just shoveled him right underneath the ball, but the umpire didn't miss it. Nicky Pesh drives towards full forward. Filippo! Well, we haven't sighted him, the youngster, but that was a terrific mark, bodying out Danny Hughes. Uh, 
as we see that ball come in, uh, there's an interchange uh, at the moment. Uh, Sean Hannum going on, and uh, like Jason Spear coming off the ground. But uh, a great take by Filippo, plenty of experience, and uh, a very good event against a heavy body player at Hughes. Filippo, another option up forward for the Eagles. They need a goal here, and they need a quickly. Taylor on the line again but off hands through for one point. He did it in the first term. I thought he might have done it again, but that one just drifted through for behind. So the Eagles, four goals, 125. Port Adelaide, five goals, three, 33. Taylor's on song. He's very dangerous. Here's Hughes with a very long kick. Two against one out there. Romy Negri now on the field for the first time. We saw him start on the bench. Pesh had the uh, ball knocked away by Gaffney. Now Northeast, a series of hand passes. Now Williams, away from half back. Out wide, Burton. He's got the run of it. Tape comes at him. In fact, it was McKay, and McKay gets the free kick. Did well. He just searched for that free kick, too. Tape forced into error, but it was clever thinking by McKay as the ball goes towards Meade. He took front position from Kennedy. Hannum went to ground. Kennedy crashed through. The handball comes out to Gaffney, who did well at the bottom of that pack. He just shoveled it out. This is Bond around the corner into space. Port Adelaide runners. There's two of them. Sentry, Hutton. Hutton shepherded for Sentry. Oh, terrific tackle by Brewer. And on the line, the Eagles have saved it. No, Sentry kick it through. Off the line, a soccer goal. What terrific second efforts by both sides. Sentry gets his first at the three and a half minute mark of the second term. Port Adelaide, six goals, three. The Eagles, four goals, one. How many tries do you need? I'd like to know what Cedric was doing at the back of the pack. He was in the wrong spot, playing forward of the play. That's not where he should be. Great tackle, great physical presence. Again, another great tackle on him by, by Shane Brewer. Finally, he got it. Bet he's never kicked a goal like that before. Back in the centre. Port Adelaide, 6-3, 39. The Eagles, 4-1, 25. We played four minutes. Second quarter, 14 points the margin. Chapman trying desperately to pick up. In the end, kicks it forward. Tottenham didn't go in, perhaps. Eventually, the hand pass comes out. Now Morfitt onto the left foot. Good kick by Morfitt. Two goals. Two goals to Morfitt. And the Eagles with a quick reply. Port Adelaide, six goals, 3.39. The Eagles, five goals, 1.31. Well, he's one of the more mature players coming back from injury, Scotty Morford. Have a look at the run, breaking through half forward, saw the opportunity, the ball flicked out to him, and uh, he's a very reliable shot at goal. He's probably an 80% conversion player. There's not much you can do about that. Good running football, and uh, Julian Burton, he's got his work cut out on him, uh, Scott Morford, tonight. The margin back to eight points, Port Adelaide 6-3, the Eagles 5-1. Accurate kicking for the Eagles. In ruck, Romano Negri from left of screen. Well out of contention there. Charms it was who paddled it down. McKay off to Geneva. Was slick work at the centre. Towards Bond. Oh, upended. Hannum missed it. Geyer tried to crash through. Borlase just provided a body. Well done, Brewer, to smother the handball out to Rowan Smith. And Schwarz picks up the loose ball and goes for the safety of the boundary line to the outer side. And I think you'll be quite content if it goes out. Oh, that's a free kick. Tottenham got one high from North East. The umpire agrees with me. And North East... Clusters, Tottenham. We talked about the physical contact and uh, the emphasis by the Eagles to take it up to Port Adelaide on a physical front. They're certainly doing that now. There'll be many more of those clashes. Tottenham on the eastern wing, wasted the kick. Straight to Chalmers. Shackey runs after him, but Chalmers long kick Smith right over the top there. Big knock by Negri. Goes in again, tries to shovel it out. Eventually does so. Now a chance for Tate. Jamie Tate clears the danger zone, but for how long? Tim Ginova runs onto the bouncing ball. A little short pass is good. Smith is loose. Hand pass over the top. Look at the Port Adelaide runners here. One of them is Hutton, and he should bang this through and does. Two goals to Hutton. The Magpies are seven goals, three. The Eagles are five goals, one. We played six and a half minutes of the second quarter. Well, let's have a look at Ginova. Good use of the ball. He's a, uh, he's a skillful player. Smith got into space, plays on quickly. Now, he's dangerous at half forward, always setting up. But it was Hutton. And uh, comments earlier about him liking to play forward and have a shot at goal. He's a speedster and an attacking wingman. Port Adelaide 7-3. The Eagles five goals won. The runner out to Paul McEnany of the Eagles. He's let Hutton drift down forward, unmanned on too many occasions. Rogers tackled by McKay, and that's a dead heat. And uh, 
that's a, yeah, a crime for Paul McEnany to, uh, to let Hutton do that. It's, it's always a decision on the centre wing, whether to go with your fella, uh, whether the numbers favour you to go, uh, to go to attack yourself. Defensive and attacking, always a decision to make for Wingman. Pays a hurried kick forward, Tottenham. Now in space, Schwartz, he's probably been the Eagles' best at half-time. Zilla, the long ball into space. Where's Shacky? He just couldn't get back, Shacky. Doesn't Brett Chalmers do that well? Playing the kick behind. Hot, long and high. He goes out very wide. There's a fight on in the forward pocket. Up the other end, that's up the right of screen. It's where the ball's about to head now. We might get a chance to see it. Tottenham toward left half forward. Out there is uh, Taylor. Had to shovel it forward. Now Ricky little uh, Nicky Pesh got caught, got the hand pass. The dangerous Taylor tries to square the football. And, oh, Chapman straight through his hands. McEnany, have a look at the, him uh, grip the teeth round the corner. Goal! What a magnificent goal by McEnany. His first for the game. They needed that. The Magpies are 7-3, 45. The Eagles are 6-1, 37. And we played eight minutes of the second quarter. And uh, David Hutton... Uh kicking that goal only seconds ago McEnany getting up for it and making up for it straight away he got the message from the bench but uh, let's not forget who put the ball back to the center of the ground that was Andrew Taylor good discipline didn't do the silly thing and have an impossible shot centered the ball gave McEnany the opportunity so the Eagles not giving up this match they trail 6-1 to 7-3 eight and a half minutes into the second term ball a slickly put out to Hutton what a terrific contest between McEnany and Hutton Hutton, the leader at this stage, from defence. That was Hannah to Morford at half forward. Chased down by Burton. Experienced man, did it well. Feeds it off to Swart. Beautifully put. Pesh inside 50. Can goal from here. Goes towards goals. It'll drift across to the right. Filippo couldn't mark, and it's a point. The Eagles, six goals, two. Port Adelaide, seven, three. The margin now back to seven points. And David Pesh, not a lot of time to make that decision, but I, I think it was the wrong one. Wanting into that uh, pocket, although he had a bit of time, might have been better to take it in a little bit closer or put it up high to the front of the square. Wasn't that a promising sortie? Here's Hughes to the far side. Oh, Negri sandwiched by two Port Adelaide players. He ducked the head in the end. Now Zilla, quick hands to Chapman. Round his body, looking for someone at left half forward. Shackie outnumbered. Phillips, one of them. Have a look. How would you like him coming at you? Now big Greg Phillips gets the uh, ball. He blindly hand passes. Gave it to Shackie in the end. And uh, now the Eagles with a big chance, looking for someone down there. Philippo, is it a push in the back? The umpire doesn't seem to think so. The ball is pushed very close to the boundary line. Borlase has got it. He's now out of bounds in the left forward pocket. And Andrew Taylor running a mark on the Eagle forward line. He's just forcing the Port Adelaide defenders to hurry their work, and he's a troublesome man back there. And all the Eagles uh, forward line players making sure the ball is kept in their area. Borlase to half back. Just lifted the eyes, but that's all. Hoped, Gaffney, a long ball to centre half forward. What a terrific gift. Oh, great mark, Gaia. Brilliant. This match has got everything. Gaia spears it forward out on the lead. His best mate, Scotty Morford, on grandstand wing. They have radar, those two. Morford to half forward. Pesh and Shaggy. Shaggy front position. Pesh at the back of the pack. Roving the loose ball. Feeds it off to Zilla. Zilla had Tottenham in support. Good work back. It goes to Shaggy. He has two. Goes for goal. And it's a point. So Lawrence Shaggy has two goals, one for the night. The Eagles, six goals, three. Port, seven, three. There's only one straight kick in this match. So the Eagles now a little bit calmer, cooler, guy to Morford, good use of the ball, and at half forward, they had the numbers there. Yes, they are lifting, aren't they, Neville? That was a good mark taken by Gaffney uh, after the Hughes kick. Got 60 metres with that. Gaffney, about 40 metres, drop punt. There's a good mark taken by McKay. Well done. In front of the members here. Western wing. Swings play towards centre half forward. Up they go. No mark taken by Mead. Big Negri. Quick hands. Well done by the big fella. But in the end, Brewer let him down. He's done it again. He's redeemed himself though. That was very clever. Now a chance for Kennedy. Long box straight down the throat of Chalmers again. Well, in fairness, he was looking for Filippo, but the kick just didn't have quite have the penetration. Now, oh, beautiful mark Brewer. He's given Rowan Smith the bar. To half forward. Shackie again the target. Filippo, Taylor, the three big men in a cluster to space. Braden Lyle, the ground under pressure from Zilla. Good work, Zilla. Around the corner, Taylor, he can feed it off to Chapman. Beautifully put, Chapman can go over the top of the goal. Oh, terrific smuggling there, finished by Geneva. Finally, Zilla on the left, boot towards goal. The Eagle fans, oh, it's hit the post. What a crucial goal that could have been. Well, it would have been a miracle goal, but... Uh... 
man that John Cale's got to do something about is Andrew Taylor. I think he said seconds ago, Dave, where he's running a muck, and that's an understatement. He's touching everything that's going through half forward. Five points the margin. Big Danny Hughes again, this time a bit lower and a bit shorter. Borlase on the 50-metre defensive half circle. Goes long and wide to the far side. Brewer again. Geez, well in front of Smith at the moment. And Shane Brewer having a wonderful night out at the office. Left half forward. Good kick. Pinpoint accuracy. And Chapman's got the football. A kick and a bit out. Oh, he was going to square it. Now he's got a, bit, got a play on and he got caught. Undid all the good work. Smith comes in. The umpire has blown the whistle. And the free kick is going to Port Adelaide. It's going to Gaffney. Short pass. Williams. He's got it on his chest. One of the best kicks in the SANFL. Stephen Williams, the 31-year-old. Defensive side of centre, long kick to right half forward. Up got good mark, almost Mead. No, it wasn't paid. Hannon, Brewer, and Brewer another touch. He's doing well, isn't he? You mentioned it earlier, the half forward goes. Shacky. Well, I thought he almost could have claimed that. Great love, pressure. Shacky. Oh, oh didn't the young Port Adelaide fellow do it well? Still on the bottom of the pack, and Braden Lyle give him a clap. Well, you'd have to give him a clap, but although those uh, Magpie supporters. Uh, it looked like they were looking, but magnificent effort. And that's what uh, heavy physical contest is all about. At the bounce, Chalmers got it down the throat of Jinnah, but, but Pesh stole the loose ball. Williams is good enough to hold it in for another ball up. And the Eagles, uh, they really look like they've, uh, they've got the fit between their teeth now. They look a lot more confident, and uh, if they can keep this up, and that's really their test, isn't it? If they can keep and sustain the physical pressure on Port Adelaide for more than just a quarter or two. Magpies by five points. It's been... A fantastic game of football so far. Tim Ginever, I wonder if it'll keep up. Big Negri, look at him lumber. Oh, well done. Brilliantly picked up by Negri. Started on the bench, almost the uh, half volley there. In fact, quite successful in the end by Zilla. Got it quickly across. Now Pesh, long kick to right half forward. Almost, oh, gee, that was very good. The target was Filippo, but brilliantly done by Chalmers with the mighty fist. And uh, great work, uh, centre field by, uh, by Zilla. But again, Chalmers... Uh, have a look at that. He's serious about his footy charmers. Plenty of other size. Couldn't work out how to play the Eagles. Port Adelaide using charmers to great effect as the ball came in. Oh, oh terrific Mark Filippo, I thought, but not paid. Off hands. And young Sam Filippo disappointed that he didn't claim that mark. Well, have a look. Uh, that's a take. That's a mistake by the umpire. A great take by Filippo. 7-3 Port Adelaide. The Eagles are 6-4. Five points. In fact, make that four points the margin. Bond got caught, only played a quarter so far, started on the interchange, here's Brewer again, another touch, Totten, Chapman, they're running amok at the moment, big Romy Negri, gee isn't he enjoying himself, 60 metres out, he's going for it, long kick, Filippo two to beat, couldn't quite take it, he was sandwiched there, goes in again, the umpire says play on, I think a lot of the Eagles fans were hoping it was holding on, the Magpies with the numbers, now Rosonico they're cool in a crisis aren't they and they get out of trouble, Port Adelaide won't wait for the whistle, Troy Bond to ground, under pressure from Hannon well, how did the umpire see that he saw it as a throw in well, the umpire continually have got decisions to make, let's have a look at Hannon's tackle, nothing wrong with that good decision, but uh, they've got to make second by second decisions in a game that's as physically tough and as close and tight as this one yeah, that's their comment. Negri in front of Smith. The ball goes to ground. Bond, the loose ball, drives towards full forward. In space, Mead. Oh, well done, Kennedy. Hasn't he earned his place? He's done a terrific job in this series. And McEnany, still running. He could have dropped his bundle earlier when Hutton got away from him a couple of times. He's still going strong. The target is Taylor, but across the line. We've had built almost 16 minutes of the second term. And we've got a great game on our hands. We're excited about, about the Eagles, but... Uh with Port Adelaide still in front by four points, and that's exactly my point. As though we're excited about uh, the uh, contest the Eagles are taking up and we're concerned about Port Adelaide's forward uh, action, uh, Mark, uh, we find they're still in front. So they're an amazing side, Port Adelaide. They'll scramble goals. They've got them from the centre players, Williams and Hutton and so on. And uh, they've still got players up there that can fire. The Smiths, the Sentries, and uh, Rowan Smith. He's got to get into the game too. 16 minutes gone. Taylor, standing start into the forward pocket. Too far for Filippo. Which way will it bounce? Danny Hughes has got it. Was it Rosonico? No, it was Rosonico. The kick not good, though. And Schwarz about 40 metres out. Bad mistake by Hughes. More experience. Should have taken it over the line. Go short to Shackey. Had two to beat down there. Northeast was one of them. Now Morford onto the dangerous left foot. Round the corner. Into the pocket. 
Shacky down there, Filippo. Northeast again, having to mop up. It goes straight to Pays, looking for some support. There was none there. Oh, Chapman got it too high. But the umpire saw a free kick earlier on, and the Magpies will clear through Northeast. It was against Pays for a throw. Northeast won it. Oh, terrific, Mark Gaffney. Play on, said the umpire, Geneva. Feeds it off to Williams, but missed with the handball. Sandwich by Pays and Taylor. Taylor's working like a drone. Have a look at those bodies going there. I mean, that's, uh, we've talked about it all night, but you won't get a better example than that. All those players, there was a 50 50 contest. The three of them arrived at uh, the apex at the same time. Zilla got the kick away, but it was smothered. Tottenham shoveled one out to Pays, who feeds it further forward in the direction of Pesh. Pesh just inside the line, takes on Brayden Lyle and Rosonico. Did well in the finish, but Greg Phillips just there, hands of the ball and forces it across the Eagle goal line. There's six goals, six the Eagles. Port Adelaide, 7-3. The margin now back to three points. And Pesh and Zilla, the small fellas, doing a lot of work for the Eagles in this particular quarter. Setri and, uh, and Geneva maybe just having their, uh, their wings cut this quarter. Hughes to Smith. Good kick. Hit him on the chest. This is Rowan Smith from half back. Good kick to left half forward. Oh, good mark taken by Darren Smith. Rowan Smith to Darren Smith. Way too far out to score. Long one. Looking for Mead on a long lead. Couldn't quite control it. Had two or three to beat down there. McEnany. The hand pass out wide. It was a bit wide, but he was under pressure. In goes Smith again. Into Schwarz's back. Umpire doesn't agree. Eventually, uh, the Eagles get out of trouble. It's a high kick to the wing. Oh, what a mark. Rowan Smith just starting to get into the game. Trying to work him into the game. Often does it when he puts him on the ball to get him into the game. He's an important player, Mark. Long kick. Almost to 50 metres. There's Tate caught with a football. The umpire gives him the benefit of the doubt and there'll be a ball up. So a very important stage of the game. We're uh, only a couple of minutes off half-time. Nobody wants to see a, a break before that uh, half-time uh, siren. And both sides, you'll find, will keep their commitment at the football. And there's still only three points in it. Taylor doing very well. Leading Rosonico around and the big burly forward for the Eagles really running him up in the forward line. Yes, he is. And uh, been quiet for the last four or five minutes. And uh, that might not uh, sound important, but it is. For the first ten of this quarter, he was, uh, he was a sensation. He only has nine goals in this Foundation Cup series. Nine goals from four games. But he did have a game where he kicked one goal five. He's not going to let that happen tonight. That's right through the middle. The Eagles have hit the front. Nine and a half minutes into the second term. Seven goals, six the Eagles. Port Adelaide, seven three. And for the first time in this match, the Eagles are in front. Well, that's important, and uh, Sam Filippo took a catch earlier this quarter, which would have put them in front, uh, but finally they are. Taking the ball in there beautifully is Paul Chapman. A good deliberate kick in. Taylor makes space and uh, shakes off uh, his immediate opponent, Rosonico, just for a, a second or two. And a good effort, good goal. So the Eagles are seven goals, 6.48. The Magpies, 7.3.45. Three points in it. And the Eagles lead. Totten with a high kick, looking for someone at centre half forward. Northeast, well done by this rugged, rough and tough half back flanker. The defensive side of centre decides to go out very wide, looking for a teammate out there. Guy did particularly well. Now pays to left half forward beyond that. Scott Morford out there with Burton. Morford did very well. Around on an arc. Short pass to McEnany is good. McEnany didn't take the mark. He took it a bit casually in the end. Northeast comes at him. Now back to Scott Morford. Shrugged the tackle. Got it across to Guy, the defender. Don't tell me he's going to kick a goal. He is. Hit the post. Or it's gone through for a behind. Big effort. A yeah, great effort to come up the ground and, uh, and have a shot at goal like that. And uh, the Eagles now with the ball in their forward line for a greater part of this, uh, of this second quarter. So a three-point quarter time deficit now, four-point lead. Port Adelaide through the agency of Hughes. A long ball. Oh, terrific. Mark Burton feeds it out to Lyle. Lyden, Lyle with pace. Goes towards half forward. He went for the lead of Mead. First band there. Oh, up into I thought was Hannum. He was. Sean Hannum trips at the umpire, and it's a free kick. Yes, I think you'd have to give him that uh, good decision and close enough to make it too. Taylor couldn't take it to the ground. Well done, Braden Lyle. He rode the loose ball and holds the ball. Another tough decision. That, uh, 
while the umpires uh, couldn't see uh, Brayton Lyle. His back was to him. There's a crowd are screaming for holding the ball. He made a very intelligent decision. The Eagles lead by four points. Fantastic game of football so far. The Eagles have stayed with Port Adelaide. Early part of the first quarter, the Magpies look as though they go on a rampage. Free kick here. And the Magpies now about to go into attack. Tim Ginever, the 26-year-old. She's been around the club for a long, long time. Over 200 games, a credit to him. Long kick, looking for Mead. Oh, almost the mark, wasn't quite paid. He was by himself a metre or so in front. There's a free kick, I think it might go against uh, Mead. It'll go to Kennedy for around the neck. Guy runs into him, then gets the hand pass. Clears to the far side, almost kicked the goal uh, only moments ago. Chapman a bit casual, back to uh, Guy from the centre. Long kick, looking for someone at centre half forward, a bit beyond that. Down there is Filippo, can he read? He's got two to beat. It seems to be the plan at the moment. Taylor just pulls a man out of the way. Filippo gets the hand pass across. Now a Schwarz, long kick. Will it get the distance? It does. But it's drifted to the right-hand side. It's through for a behind. And the score at the 23-minute mark. The Eagles are seven goals, 8.50. The Magpies are seven goals, 3.45. Yes, it is finger-biting finger uh, tension here at Football Park. But uh, good work by Guy to go through half-back there, provide the run and take the chance. Northeast found Bond. Bond to half-forward. Oh, I thought he wasted the kick, but it was beautifully placed to Darren Smith. He feeds it off to Stephen Williams, who goes towards goal. And you must say, things not going right for Port Adelaide, just to the left side of the goal buttons. And a point the result. Seven goals for Port Adelaide. They trail the Eagles seven goals, eight, 23 and a half minutes into the second term. Yeah, good movement by, uh, by Williams. They know that they've got to spread the goal-kicking responsibility tonight. It's not going to be easy to kick uh, 18 or so goals, which you'll need to to win this match. Negri feeds it off, but the siren sounds at half-time. It's the Eagles in front, and it's only four points, but a lead nonetheless. An exciting quarter of football, and uh, the Eagles grab the lead, and uh, maybe a bit unlucky that uh, Sam Filippo wasn't paid that mark in the square, but... Nonetheless, uh, it's been mentioned before, the Eagles have settled down. Uh, their record in finals, 4-0, is playing on their minds, but they know confidently that they can match Port Adelaide tonight, particularly up forward uh, with Shaki and Taylor. It's a bit of a combination like Hodges and uh, Modra or Dunstall and Lockett. They, they do perform well together. They've both been profiles up there, both kicking goals and doing a good job. The small men, uh, Zilla and company, around the ball, Pesh doing a great job. I think the absence of, uh, of Cetri and company, the small men, has really hurt Port Adelaide. But nonetheless, they're still right in the race. And uh, I think the sympathies, the sympathies lie with the Eagles here tonight. But Port Adelaide, they won't go down without a big, big fight. Thank you, Neville. At halftime, the Eagles lead seven goals, 8.50. The Magpies, 7.446. You're viewing the Foundation Cup live and exclusively on ABC Sport. Strictly sensational Paul Mercurio faces his toughest audition yet on Everybody's Health Check. So whatever I've been you're dieting doing... for six weeks for this show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> also, the vital link between breakfast and learning. Everybody shatters the myth that children won't eat healthy foods. This device offers the deaf new sensations into the world of sound and could bring Australia millions in export dollars. Everybody, 8 o'clock Thursday, ABC. I'm standing on the top of the world. But not for long. Michael Palin's on the road again, this time from north to south, from the frozen Arctic through Scandinavia, Russia, the Middle East and Africa to the equally frozen Antarctica. The intrepid Palin confronts a revolution, the end of a 30-year civil war and the downfall of an African dictator. The race is on to catch the once-a-year ship from Cape Town to the South Pole. It's his most arduous journey yet. Michael Palin's Pole to Pole, 6 o'clock Sunday. And welcome back to Football Park. It's half-time here in the grand final of the Foundation Cup. The Eagles 
lead by four points over the Magpies. It's been a fantastic game of football. The Home and Away series starts this Saturday. ABC TV Sport will be there. Saturday football starts at 4.15, 90 minutes. Live from 4.15, Port Adelaide and West Adelaide at Football Park. The Eagles and South Adelaide at Woodville. And the other match, Central and Sturt at Elizabeth. No telecast on that. Don't forget Glenelg, North and Norwood with the bye. Well, while we're looking forward, we can also look back at some highlights of the Foundation Cup. And with me is injured Port Adelaide fullback Roger Delaney, chomping at the bit, looking to get back into this game. And Roger, you'd be a Rose Tattoo fan, wouldn't you? Rose Tattoo, uh, never heard of him, Steve. <laughs> well, I think the clip went over pretty well anyway. Can I ask you a little bit about tonight's game? It's everything you'd expect of a grand final, isn't it? Yeah, it's been pretty tough so far, actually. Both teams have uh, been going in hard, and as you can see by the scoreboard, um, I think it'll go all the way, too. I, think, I don't think any team will really break away. And uh, certainly the most physical contest that we've seen for Port Adelaide in their Foundation Cup build-up. Yeah, I think we've had it fairly easy up until we played Norwood last week. And, um, you know, we need a good hit out before Saturday too. I mean, the real, the real stuff starts Saturday, so it, this is good for us. Well, speaking of Saturday, uh, Port versus West Adelaide, can I ask you a little bit about that uh, Port Adelaide, no letdown it would seem from last year's Premiership side, uh, uh, 17 players drafted. Can you tell us a little bit about your own opinion of the Port's success to, uh, to, to their winning ways? Well, basically, I mean, we won the grand final last year and we, we had a good time for six or seven weeks and then it's back to training. And, uh, you know, once we start training again, it's, it's just all focused on the grand final for next year. And, um, you know, you have to go through November, December, January, February before you even start playing. So it's four months of getting together again and, and getting everything up. If you start thinking about last year, then, then you, it's just going to fall away. And Roger, yourself aside, of course, uh, when people look for a flaw in the Port Adelaide side over the past five years, they talk of pace. Uh, do you think that, that the injection of the young fellows this, this time around has, uh, has really meant something for Port? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've, we've got uh, guys like Troy Bond, uh, Shea Cockatoo, Collins, who have got a lot of pace now. And, um, I mean, we've always sort of uh, thought our pace is in the brain to, to read the ball better than, than other people. And uh, that, that's what we've played on for the last few years. But it's always good to have some players with explosive pace too. Explosive indeed. And there's certainly a good blend of experience and pace as well. Can I ask you lastly about yourself? Uh, what your injury has been and when you're ready to be back in action? Well, I actually uh, tore a cartilage and, and uh, crushed a fat pad under the kneecap, which I've never heard of before, but um, I'll be back Saturday. I was sort of iffy for tonight, but two games in a week was just a bit too much, so I'll be back Saturday. Roger Delaney, thanks for talking with us and good luck for the season. Thanks, Triggy. Stephen Trigg speaking there with Roger Delaney. Wouldn't he love to be playing tonight? He did hint, though, that he may be playing against West Adelaide on Saturday. That's the opening of the Home and, Away, Home and Away series. ABC Sport will be there. West Adelaide aren't going all that well at the moment. They haven't won a game in this pre-season competition. But Neil Curley, their coach, is not perturbed, as he told David Mackay earlier on. Neil, four losses in uh, four outings in the Foundation Cup. Not an ideal way of starting the season. No, but 
when you lose the first one, which we did, by an narrow margin to the north, well then, it's a good opportunity to start some experimenting, have a look at a lot of new players, which we've done. We've tried out a lot of new players this year and a lot of players in different positions. And at this stage, we're still, I guess, experimenting. And next week, of course, will be the week where we settle down and try and pick our best side, place it in the best positions and get the best out of the team. And uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll have a pretty good side this year. I'm, I'm more confident this time this year than I was last year. I think we've got a, I think we've got a lot of personnel that can play good footy. There was some concern last year that uh, you were disadvantaged by the Crows players, training up with the Crows, not training with the club. Players like Rashudo this year, you've got Sean Wren, Mark Nick and Tony Modret, Lindner. Those blokes aren't going to be available to you. How does that unsettle the side? Well, uh, if they're not available all the time, it's fine because then you can work your side around it. It's when they come back and go back and go up and come down like they did last year and we'll, we'll see that again this year quite a bit. And uh, So that is a little bit unsettling it depends on the on the their attitude when they come back to it, the, I found last year at the start of the year it was very good but then as the year drew towards the end their attitude dropped away when they came back so we'll just have to watch that but we've still got a lot of a lot of new players we're fitting in and trying to get used to our type of footy and uh, that'll take a bit of time but I'm quite confident it will come You've lost a lot of players over the summer. Players like John O'Donoghue has gone, Simon Byrne's gone, Lachlan Ross has gone. You've, uh, you've lost quite a bit of experience and a bit of strength around the ground, but you seem to have recruited pretty well. Oh, yeah. We, every club loses players. Well, I guess we've lost our se seven or eight. But we've picked up, uh, I think, about five or six pretty handy players. And I'll take them... See, we had two boys first up tonight, have you a look at them, and uh, I thought they fit in pretty well. And they'll get better as they learn the, the players. And we had another three players tonight virtually playing their first game for the year in uh, Fitzsimmons, uh, Carlson and McKinnon. So they needed the game, and Barch, that's another one. So they needed the game badly uh, to get something under their belt. And I'm certain that within, uh, by the time our first game comes around next week that our boys will be pretty well prepared. Plus they, they played pretty hard last night and uh, I, think I'm, I don't think I left too much fuel in the tank. It must have been pretty heartbreaking last year. The last game of the year you lost against the Bulldogs. You missed out on the five. Mm. M must have shattered the boys. How did that affect their summer training? Uh, the summer training was good. We put that behind them. It, it hurt us on the day badly. But once they got training again, uh, they, they just missed that. And um, our, our, our focus was on this year. Um, and that's what we're after. You know, we, we've got to try and get a good year in our, under our belt. And I'm confident we can. How confident? Oh, I'm very confident that we'll have a good year. It's going to take a lot of work, but I think we have the personnel to do that work. Neil, thanks very much. Good. Thanks. Neil Curley speaking there with David Mackay. He looks as ferocious as ever, doesn't he, Neil Curley? In fact, moments after that interview, he ate David Mackay. Let's check the scores now. It's half-time at Football Park in the grand final of the Foundation Cup. Well, the Magpies led at the first change, 4-3, 27-4, to four goals, 24. The Eagles fought back magnificently, though, and at half time, Magpies trail by four points. The Eagles are seven goals, 8.50. The Magpies, seven goals, 4.46. Let's now have a look at some highlights from the first half. Swords, the captain, working hard. Possession number four in the opening minute. Shackey beaten to that one. Phillips took front position. Rosonico at the back, sweeps it into northeast. Back to Rosonico in the one two, hugging the boundary line. It's a long kick underneath this one. McKay just got a hand of ball. Good enough to push it forward to Smith. Smith's running forward. That's Rowan Smith to Darren Smith. Into the open goal. No, it's across the top. Lee. Lead in the goals. Paul Adelaide's first goal. They're one goal one. The Eagles haven't scored. And we're four and a half minutes into the first turn. At the centre. Port Adelaide, two goals, two. They've jumped the Eagles. They're 14 points. The Eagles aren't yet on the board. Pesh got it out to Tottenham. Cleverly done. A long ball to centre half forward. It's Phillips again, the man mountain. Punches it towards the boundary line. New chum, Burton, took the knock, rode it well from Pays, gets the kick away, and Gaffney sits under this, this one. Rowan Smith shovels it forward, gives the opportunity for Gaffney to put a long ball to Darren Smith. Oh, he did well, Smith. He got in the right position. Setry, this is physical. Good running by Port Adelaide. Williams, who's done so much damage early, pushes it in. Is it touch or is it a goal? The goal up by says it's through. So Port Adelaide, three goals, 2.20. Lead the Eagles, no score. We've played nine and a half minutes into the first turn. 
So McEnany playing on a wing tonight. He's roved throughout the Foundation Cup. Centres up the ball. Beautifully placed kick and he's picked out Shane Brewer. The former Horsham lad has found a niche at half back for the Eagles. Pushes it towards Taylor, who's out at centre-half forward. It would appear. A handball from Zilla to Shaggy. It's a two-pronged attack across half forward for the Eagles. As Shaggy goes to goals, and the Eagles are on the board. 11 and a half minutes in the first term. Shaggy kicks his first. The Eagles, one straight goal. Trail Port Adelaide, three goals, two. Here we uh, see uh, Schwarz gets the hand pass. Chapman couldn't pick up. Morfitt likewise went across to jump over the football. Now the dangerous Taylor. Drop putt, an awkward kick for Shaggy down there. Did very well. Phillips has got him. Shaggy out to goal. A terrific goal by Shaggy. His second. Nothing Phillips could do. The handball comes out to Gaffney, who did well at the bottom of that pack. He just shoveled it out. This is Bond around the corner into space. Port Adelaide runners. There's two of them. Sentry, Hutton. Hutton shepherded for Sentry. Oh, terrific tackle by Brewer. And on the line, the Eagles have saved it. No, Sentry kicked it through. Off the line, a soccer goal. What terrific second efforts by both sides. In the first ten of this quarter, he was uh, he was a sensation. He only has nine goals in this Foundation Cup series. Nine goals from four games. But he did have a game where he kicked one goal five. He's not going to let that happen tonight. That's right through the middle. The Eagles have hit the front. 19 and a half minutes into the second term. Seven goals, six the Eagles. Port Adelaide, 7-3. And some exciting highlights there of the first half of the Foundation Cup Grand Final between Port Adelaide and the Eagles. Just reiterating, if you've just joined us, the Eagles lead by four points. Well, Neville Roberts would love to be out there, I'm sure of that, but the closest he'll get is on the boundary line. Here's Neville Roberts. I'd love to be, Mark, but I think my crippled body has got uh, other things in mind. I think I'm better up there with you. But uh, joining me, uh, injured rover from the Eagles, Darren Clem. Thanks for your time, Darren. It's, uh, it's been a good campaign for the Eagles, the Foundation Cup, four wins. Yeah, we didn't uh, set out to do anything special and, and we've uh, just played our game and been fortunate enough to, to get where we are tonight and, and uh, you know, the first half's been a pretty good half of, of football so um, while uh, you know, we'd love to win the game, you know, we're just happy to have a good hit out. And uh, it's been a good hit out to now. Has the emphasis for uh, your camp been on, uh, on the physical side and, uh, and matching Port Adelaide in that area? Yeah, Port are a pretty physical side and, and obviously we've got to match them there if, if we want to beat them this year. And We've got a few things worked out that uh, we'll use against Port. We won't use them in this game because um, you know, we're more, it's more important for us to win the games for four points. So, um, yeah, we've got a few things worked out. Well, it's good to see you keeping some things up your sleeve. I might get those off camera off you. <laughs> Looking forward to, uh, to next week. Uh, you've got uh, your first game at home at, uh, at Pecker Park, as we used to call it, but now the Eagles home. Looking forward to that one against South. That'll be a toughie. Yeah, um, we played South a couple of weeks ago at, at the parade and, and while it wasn't really good for football out there with the lights set up and, and uh, we, we did enough to win but I thought I think South will be a very good side this year and it'll be good to get back to uh, Woodville. They spent a bit of money there and, and put some boxes in for the sponsors and whatnot. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And uh, just talking about players you might, uh, well, that you would definitely have lost, uh, Robert Pyman and uh, Paul Bullis. Whilst I think personally you could cover Bullis, maybe Pyman, just one of those special players that uh, you'll, you'll always miss. Yeah, um, Robbie's a, a very good player, and, and when you, you when you lose a player that's been playing in the centre for for you all year, it's a bit like I guess Porter got the same problem with Buckley. Um, we've got to find someone else to fit in there, and, and we've got a lot of really good young juniors. So I mean, I can't see us having any problem finding another good player in there. We, we I guess, we'd struggle a bit to find someone of Robbie Pyman's class, though. And uh, the small man tonight, uh, young uh, Pesh and uh, Stephen Zilla, they're doing pretty well. You might have to give uh, Nick Pesh a clip behind the ear Thursday <laughs> night to get, a, to get a game. I could be kicking the Jew off, I think, on Saturday. No, um, uh, they've played very well and, and they're just another couple of good juniors that we've got coming through. Indeed they have. And uh, thanks for your time tonight, Darren. Thank good you. luck for the season. Thank you. Neville Roberts speaking there with Darren Clem. He uh, is injured, as uh, Neville said. He'd love to be playing on Saturday against uh, South Adelaide. Their form's been very good over the last couple of weeks. John Reed's been very excited about it. He's also very excited about the 1993 season. Here he is speaking with Stephen Trigg. With me, South Adelaide coach entering his sixth season, John Reed. Are you happy in the lead into the season, John? Yeah, it hasn't been too bad, Stephen. We've, um, we, we certainly haven't rushed at it as maybe we have in other, other seasons. And uh, I feel we've been building up and we, we, uh, you know, we just started to do things better over the last couple of weeks and uh, putting the side together for longer periods of time so yeah I think we're, we're starting to get where we want to be. John the uh, third in 1991, fifth in 92, what's the players attitude been on the track over the pre-season? Well I think all of us uh, at the club realise that 93 really is here, I mean three years we've been in the five, 
So we've, um, you know, put some stability back in the club. But stability is one thing, Stephen. Now we have to uh, really go ahead and, and forge our name. Uh, people don't really remember stability. They just remember premiership. So it's about time that we, uh, we feel that, uh, you know, we sort of mark, uh, put our mark on, on the competition. And our preparation's been good. Commitment's been excellent. And, uh, you know, we're very confident of a, of a good year. And of course, most premierships require a, a top leading ruckman. You've lost, lost Matthew Clark, and we haven't seen anything of Heath so far. How do you cover those guys? Yeah, very disappointing with uh, Matthew, but I mean, that's life. That's how it all goes. And Daryl Heath's unfortunately got an injury at the moment, but uh, hopefully he'll be back before too long. And Daryl's a good, you know, Daryl led our rucks in, uh, in 91, and he's a good player. Uh, Randall Bone, I was very pleased uh, with some of his form, I think. Uh, maybe given that responsibility, Randall's at, also at the crossroads in his career. And uh, I think he'll carry the load pretty well. There's John Reid speaking with Stephen Trigg. Half time is almost completed. The Eagles lead by four points. And to take up the call for the second half, here's David Mackay. Thank you, Mark. Stay with us. This should be a terrific half of football. Probably the best you'll see this year. The two best teams in the Foundation Cup going hammer and tong. The Eagles trail by three points at quarter time. They lead by four points at halftime, and Port Adelaide are never down and out. Four-point ball game as umpire Kevin Chambers sets them in motion again. It was a terrifically physical contest in the first half. In ruck, Neiman from the right, Chalmers from the left. Neiman wins that one. It goes to ground. Zilla tried to get through. McEnany upended Stephen Williams, number 10, over the top of that ball, and it's another bounce. And an interesting gauge, I suppose, They're waiting for Roger Delaney on the bench. The hardcore supporters, the Port Adelaide supporters surrounding, were critical of their own forward line. Each time the ball went down there, come on, you forwards, do something about it. So maybe there's something in that for Port. Well, Port Adelaide without Tyler and without the services of Scotty Hodges, they seem to find something. Darren Smith has been a bogeyman. He kicked uh, four a couple of games ago, and he's beautifully picked out Rowan Smith. So D Smith to R Smith. And just when we said that Rowan Smith had been quiet tonight, he nips in and takes a crucial mark. Yes, but it's still fair to say that he has been quiet tonight, in and out of the game in the second quarter, very, very quiet in the first. He's the sort of player that when he does sneak into the game can really explode into it and uh, take the game apart. 25 metres out directly in front. Port Adelaide regained the lead. 56 seconds into the third term. The Premiership quarter, that's Rowan Smith's first. Port Adelaide, eight goals, four. Lead the Eagles, seven goals, eight. Well, it's the same start that they had in the first quarter, Port Adelaide. It's just for the one that they needed to put themselves back in front. And it's the start, of course, that the Eagles didn't need. Port Adelaide with a very even spread of goal kickers so far. David Hutton, their only player to kick more than one goal. The Magpies, eight goals, 4.52. The Eagles, 7.50. Port Adelaide lead by two points. We've played almost two minutes of the third quarter. Zilla's got the football. Chapman as well. In goes Tottenham. Williams has got him, the two number tens. Very physical contest again. And again, boundary side. The, the physical clashes, the body the body work is really quite fierce down there tonight. Chalmers and Neiman. Chalmers had two bites at it successfully. Went straight down to Rogers. High kick straight through northeast hands. That's unusual. Now Mead playing in defence. Here's Cockatoo Collins. Shea Cockatoo Collins on the ground for the first time. A very exciting individual. Kicks to right half forward. The big fist of Hannah was very good. In goes Borlase. Quick hands there by Zilla. Now Swars changes direction. Looking out there for his big ruckman, Neiman. Oh, he falls over at the psychological moment. Now a chance for little Pesh. He's on the wing on that eastern side of the ground. It's a long kick. Magpie players getting back. Almost Danny Hughes. That's an uncustomary uh, miss, but he was good enough to redeem himself, and he clears away from the danger zone. Well, he did, but he didn't lift the eyes. And Neiman, that kick behind play, he's played that pretty well tonight. Taylor, front position. Pesh comes back in board to Taylor. Yeah. Taylor tried to do the difficult and thump it forward. Now, Foster on the field for Port Adelaide. So, John Cale ringing the changes. Shea Cocker, two Collins on. Foster goes into defence. And Mead also into defence. High kick, no mark taken. Rogers behind. Smith in front. Now he's over the top of Rogers, harassing him. Now, Setri. Wanted to lay it off with a hand pass. Eventually goes with a kick. Doesn't get a lot of distance, but it went very high. Awkward to mark. Hannum there. So too, number 12 is Chapman. Out of bounds. Stephen, I don't think the Eagles have made any changes at all. No, the eyes uh, quickly scanned the ground just after halftime began, and uh, it seems as though they're all in their same position. So a very big vote of confidence by Bruce Winter and his players. 
Enrak Rogers got it down to Gaia. Gaia hurried left footer into space. It goes. Neiman just caught off balance. But Taylor, he's done well tonight. Chalmers was yelling at him, trying to put him off. But the high ball to Shacky at centre half forward, just on the 50 metre line. Lawrence Shacky will feed it off short inboard, and it's Tottenham. So Tottenham will kick for goal from about 35 metres out, the angle tight. I think they kicked from Taylor. It was actually off the side of the boot. He was looking to put it towards the head of the goal square. When it slewed off the side, it was very good by the Eagles to have Shacky in front and now Tottenham from 30. So the former Northern Territorian splits the centre, pops it through. That's his first goal. The Eagles are back in front. Four minutes into the third quarter. The Eagles are going on with it. Their eight goals, 8.56. Port Adelaide, 8.452. Stuart Tottenham has been playing at half forward all night, and Paul Northeast, his immediate opponent. Now, Northeast has gained many possessions at half back because the Eagles are using Tottenham up the ground. When the bell bounces, he starts backward of the centre square and, uh, and is charging through the middle of the ground, allowing Northeast easy possessions. Good straight kick. Just bent around a bit. Through. Back in the centre. The Magpies and the Eagles. It's the Eagles, eight goals, 8.56. Port Adelaide, eight goals, four, 52. Up onto the half forward line again now for the Mag for the Eagles, I should say. Now a chance for Chapman, gets it across, looking for Shacky. Very cleverly done to Rosonico, though. They're very cool again in defence. Rosonico, well, he was uh, just uh, so casually, took a bounce and then kicks to the wing on this uh, western side of the ground. Here's Williams, just slightly on the attacking side of centre. Long kick, three or four players fly for the mark. No one successful, picked up by Tate. Good anticipation. Up towards centre half forward, straight through the hands of Chalmers. He took some big marks in the first half, not this time. Foster, it rolls and rolls straight into the hands of Geyer. Out wide, big chance now for the Eagles. Danger signs here as Morford kicks into the forward pocket. Good kick, wonderful lead by Filippo. He's going to go short. Will it come unstuck? No, it won't. Taylor doesn't let him down. Already got two goals. And the first kick by Morford was a beauty. Caught on the wrong leg, that being the right. Just balanced enough to get it away, and it did very well. Lifted the eyes now downfield, and Taylor from a very acute angle. Look the pass off. Here's Taylor. Long kick right over the top is Chalmers. So this has come unstuck at the moment. Schwarz tackled with the football. Dispossessed, picked up by Pays. Has a shot at goal. They contest in front of the goal square. Shackey's there. Now Foster away from the back pocket. Foster oh, could be out of the fry pan in the five, but Hutton provided a contest. Did well in the finish. Zilla, the left, snap for goal, and it's wide. Across the face of goal, in fact, it's out of bounds on the full. Well, David, I'll tell you who provided the contest, and that was Andrew Taylor, working very hard to keep the ball in the Eagles' attacking zone. Did it well. An inspiration to his teammates, and so too that by David Neiman on the back line. Well, he was drafted by St Kilda only a couple of weeks ago, and hasn't it done a world of good for his confidence? The pace kicks high. Filippo dropped the chest mark. He had to sit on that ball. Now, Chalmers went to ground and didn't affect the handball. Ball A spins it out for the front of the back, but there's Schwartz, the captain. He's popped it through. That's Schwartz's first. A crucial goal for the Eagles. It gives them a 10-point lead. They're nine goals eight. Port Adelaide eight goals four. Seven minutes into the third term. Well, aren't Port Adelaide getting some of their own? The tackle on the big Ruckman and Chalmers by the smallest man on the ground in Pesh was superb. It sprung the ball free, and Captain Peter Schwartz back into the side tonight did it very well around the corner. It was amazing how much time he had in the end. Lifted the eye, snuck it around the corner, did it well for the Eagles. 10 points the margin, the Eagles are 9 8 62. Port Adelaide 8 4 52. Williams, desperation, short kick. Hayes, Williams, very good smother then. Just quickly going through the goal scorers for the Eagles. Two goals to Morford, one to Tottenham, one to Schwarz, two to Taylor, two to Lawrence Shackey, and one to McEnany. I'll get David to uh, do the Port Adelaide goal scorers in a minute. The kick up in the air, not uh, all that effective. Here's Pays, gets the hand pass, Shea Cocker to Collins, kicks it but only into the direction of the Eagles' half-forward line. And again, although uh, in credit to him, he is going to the boundary line. Well, let's cover the Port Adelaide goal scorers while we're waiting for the throw-in. Hutton has two for Port Adelaide. Singles to Bond, McKay, Williams, Rowan Smith, Adrian Setri and Darren Mead, who's now playing at centre-half back. Throw-in. Left forward pocket. High kick by Port Adelaide out of defence. Over the head of Smith. Gee, good pace by Smith, the centre-half forward. Now Brewer, who had a very good first half. Guy, wasn't that a good hand pass? Very hard and quick to Hannum. But the kick wasn't all that good. Oh, he's dropped two in this quarter. Chalmers playing a kick behind play. Didn't uh, get the uh, mark, but the uh, redeemed himself OK. But there's Pays. 
It was a great mark. Threw himself with everything at it, and it's just typical of the Eagles' approach at the moment. They've really got a scent now. Pays with a long kick, looking for Filippo, setting himself. Shacky in front. Filippo couldn't get his hand to it. It comes to the side of the pack, a chance for Chapman. And Port Adelaide clear away again through ball eyes. Oh, that was so costly because a take there had another Eagles goal on the board for sure. Missed and a turnover, but there's still a chance. Chapman showing some nerves. Stephen Williams, I think, has shaded him so far in this match, but Chapman's had some important inboard possessions. Bruce Winter, you don't think he's not fired up for this match. Tottenham claimed the loose ball, feeds it off to Schwartz, who gives it away now to Pesh. Outside, it's Chapman. Chapman goes short. I thought it was a nice kick initially. Filippo off. This is Zilla. Stephen Zilla, the left foot. Zilla's got it. He hit the post earlier, but he nailed that one. It's a goal. The Eagles, 10 goals, 8-68. Port Adelaide 8 4 52. The margin 16 points, and we're only nine minutes into the third term. Well, I can tell you that it was a very, very good goal in the end as we see Pesh at around the 50 metre line. The kick came in very quickly but awkwardly. Now, watch this on the tape. If that ball hadn't been given off to uh, Morfitt and the play missed, then I think the Bruce Winter would have had one or two words to say. As it turned out, around the corner by Zilla was very good, and he has his first for the Eagles. They're doing it all very well. Crucial goal there. The Eagles 10-8-68. The Magpies 8 goals, 4-52. 10 minutes, third quarter. Williams runs into Chapman. High kick up towards centre-half forward. Rosonico. Well, he's a bit more desperate here now, the defender. He's still pretty cool, though, in, uh, in a crisis. Now it's northeast. Back it goes. Hughes away onto the wing on this western side of the ground a chance for williams the magpies go into attack long kick looking for someone in the forward pocket almost wakeland picked up by jennifer runs into the open goal and swings it through first goal tim jennifer and the magpies fight back they're nine goals 458 the eagles are 10 8 68 back to a 10 point ball, ball game well i mentioned earlier in the quarter the feelings of the port adelaide supporters surrounding the bench at half time and just before half time my feeling was that some of their on ballers needed to do some more and this man was one of them and just prior to mentioning him in he comes and scores his first goal for the game but sam Filippo, way back at the other end of the ground allowed hughes to do the running set up the goal for port adelaide way back at halfback so jennifer the former rosewater boy also had a run with woodville back in the early 80s now a port adelaide vice captain the eagles 10-8 Port, nine goals for only a 10-point ball game. To ground, Pesh just thrown away by Stephen Williams. McEnany tried to go through, but Northeast claimed him. Taylor off the ground is good work. And look at this, he's found Filippo. That's a mark, and the umpire agrees. Sam Filippo, I was critical of him just a moment ago when he allowed Hughes to run. On this occasion, he started in front. He certainly got a, an edge and pace over Hughes. When the quick kick came forward, he's in just the right spot. Got himself in there and took a good sliding mark. Drafted by Footscray, son of former West Orange champion Peter Filippo, former Eagle captain too. Over 270 games, his dad, this fellow's a chip off the old block. As Filippo into goal, nails it. That's his first. Well, the Eagles regain that 16-point lead. It's a crucial one. 11 and a half minutes gone into the third term, and the Eagles 11-8, lead Port 9-4. We called earlier in the game that Sam Filippo looked a bit little, little out of sorts. Much of his contest through this Foundation Cup has been from centre-half back and centre-half forward. He looked to be going to just the wrong spots earlier in the game. Now he's finding his feet. He's adhering to some basic principles of playing in front. We've seen him do most things well since half-time, apart from that one episode where he let Hughes run down the ground. Well, let's not write the Magpies off yet. We did it a couple of weeks ago. What, 12 minutes into the third quarter? Never. <laughs> no, not quite, not quite in the last term. But, uh, gee, it's been a terrific game of football so far. Can the Eagles sustain this? Good tackling there. Williams right over the top of uh, Guyer. He's been caught for holding the ball. So here's Williams from the centre. Long kick, looking for Meade. Up he goes. Uh, in fact, it was Wakeland. He couldn't control it. In the end, he's got it. Swings it round his body into the forward pocket. Didn't bend it back enough. It's out of bounds in the right forward pocket seen much of that player so far we know that he's exciting in fact in the first outing here at football park but, uh, in the second game for port adelaide it was daryl wakeland was very very good but uh, very quiet tonight people in port adelaide will be watching daryl wakeland with interest comes from the old stomping ground of greg phillips too so that must have something in the water over there to ground and umpire kevin chambers says it's a bounce John Cale, we've watched him before in finals. He ages before your very eyes and have a look at the face. <laughs> Who'd want to be a footy coach, Stephen Trigg? 
Well, he stayed very calm at half time, and uh, when the onslaught was coming from the Eagles earlier in this quarter, he looked fine. Bond around the corner into space. A pack flew at that one. Brew at the back of the pack. Will he take it across the line? I think he will in the finish. He, oh, no, he doesn't. He did well to get it out to Kennedy. A hurry kick, and it's short. Good option. Chapman. Chapman's had some important possessions, but he's also fumbled the odd one or two. Pays was put under pressure by Tottenham, and Pays goes for the boundary line. Kept in play by Taylor. Well, Andrew Taylor, give yourself a clap. He's killed him tonight on the left boot. And the Neiman Shepherd superb. Yes, Neiman did well behind play just to provide space. Zilla taken high. Play on to the umpire. Schwartz got through. And Shaggy, beautiful vision, short to Filippo. He got one 30 seconds or so ago. Now he'll line up for his second. Well, how often do you see it? Port Adelaide under some pressure. And they went straight at the body on a couple of occasions there. Now, the Eagles have withstood it so far. The real test is yet to come because Port Adelaide, when challenged like a caged tiger, they'll come out of the blocks as we see Braden Lowell back onto the ground. Wakeland off. Filippo, one goal, one tonight. Oh, it's two. So things going right for Bruce Winters Eagles as Filippo kicks his second. 14 and a half minutes into the third turn. The Eagles 12 goals eight lead Port Adelaide nine goals four. One of the reasons that uh, both of these sides have won four straight, the reflex there from Schwarz was terrific and Shaki with the presence and intelligence just to get it over the top. One of the reasons that both of these sides have got through with four straight so far is their physical strength and we saw the Eagles withstand it on that occasion. All set up by Taylor. Wasn't that superb in front of the members? And do not under underestimate the fact that Neiman came in from an oblique angle and took out the chaser. It was all very good. Here comes Pisani, waiting to get on. He'd be itching to get on. The Eagles lead 12 goals, 8.80. Port Adelaide 9-4, 58. We played 15 minutes of the third quarter. Big test now for Port Adelaide. As McEnany, all oh, well charged down though. He was ready to kick that well and truly into the forward line. Pays. Not from pillar to post. Williams. Oh, the umpire comes across. He'll ball it up. And those one percenters when Port Adelaide need them, the Stephen Williams smother was on. The second effort was also on, and he wrapped him up as strong as an ox. Well, the umpire said McEnany ducked. That's why there was no free there. Neiman in ruck. He's done a terrific job tonight. Off the ground. Cockatoo Collins. Geneva had a rare fumble. Pushed it forward. Bond also had a fumble under pressure from Zilla. It's the Eagles' pressure that's causing the problem to Port Adelaide. Brewer, taken. Plain gets it away to Zilla. This is Stephen Zilla. His brother Jason sitting on the interchange bench. Hasn't had a run yet. Foster, into space. Rowan Smith sits back waiting for the ball to come to him. Got it. In the end, concedes ground. Back to Rosonico. Gee, they're undecided, Port Adelaide. This is rare. Lyle, inside the 50-metre square, just around the centre. Towards half forward on the outer side, he goes. Front position, McKay couldn't repeat that screamer of the first quarter. Oh, clever. But beautifully pushes it into space. Gaffney, can he get through? Oh, Kennedy, well done, Kennedy, holding the ball. That is one of the best tackles you will ever see in this game. It's hurt him, it took him right up the front, and they are the toughest things in the world to do, to take a player straight up the front. Gaffney just onto the ground to replace David Hutton. There's Brewer. Good kick towards centre wing. Went straight through Neiman's hands. Here's... Morford, now Totten, big chance for him. What a clever hand pass that was to Pays. Left footer, not a particularly good kick though. Mead, now Geneva, short pass, and the Magpies turn it around as we know they can. Smith out wide, Shea Cockatoo Collins, CCC. Long kick, looking for Darren Smith. Up they go, Mackay from behind. Opportunity now for Hannum. He's got to do the tackling, and he did that very well on Bond. Picked up quickly though by Geyer. Geyer with a long kick to right half forward. Over there is Pesh. Can't control it. Opportunity now for Port Adelaide to score away or to charge away through Lyle, but only as far as uh, Hannum, and he's hand passes quickly across. Well, the tackling is absolutely superb. We mentioned it just a moment ago from both sides, but uh, that wrap up from fullback was great by the Eagles. Shea Cockatoo Collins beautifully pinpoints it to Chalmers, so Port Adelaide need to kick a winning score. Tottenham's off, he's got cramp. They'll just rest him, but the worry is Kennedy in defence is holding a shoulder. And Chalmers shoots for goal. Port Adelaide have got their trump card at full forward. And they need his marking power. Darren Smith said himself, couldn't mark it. Chapman went through. Gaffney, well done, Chapman, across the line. An indication of the pace with which this game's been played. Now, Stuart Tottenham, despite uh, a somewhat uh, disjointed pre-season and, and, and uh, uh, prep preparation for the season, just cramping, and he's been replaced by Jason Zilla. 18 minutes third quarter 
Chance for Gaffney. Now Bond. Don't tell me he's going to kick this from the dead pocket. No, it'll fall just short. Oh, great mark, McKay. It's been pretty active, McKay, particularly early in the game when he kicked his goal in the first quarter. Uh, it was very active. We saw him take a couple of strong marks and get himself in at the bottom of the pack. His first goal was a result of a free kick. Let's see what he can do from this one straight in front. Oh, he's directly in front. He shouldn't miss, and he doesn't. He gets his second. They need it that Port Adelaide. No question about that. The Magpies now 10 goals for 64. The Eagles are 12-8-80. We've played 18 and three-quarter minutes of the third quarter. Well, in round four of the Foundation Cup, Port Adelaide's last outing here at Football Park, Norwood really bounced back and challenged Port Adelaide. It was the closest that anybody got to the Port Adelaide defence. And the Port Adelaide defence that's held so firm so far, it's only had nine against Central, six against Sturt, six against West Adelaide, as we see Stephen Williams off the ground. Norwood did the damage with them and kicked 11, but their defence has stood up very, very well. Norwood the side that challenged them, and at the moment it's the Eagles with uh, just coming up the 20-minute mark of the third term that already have 12 on the board. It looks like Rowan Smith has gone into the centre, replacing Williams in that position. Now, the Eagles have kicked five goals straight this quarter. Port Adelaide have kicked three goals straight, so we've had eight goals without a miss in the opening 19 and a half minutes of this third term and it's the Eagles 12 goals 8 leading Port 10 goals 4 the margin back to 16 points Neiman look at the concentration opposed to Mead now having a run on the ball he got away a handball to Geneva who was claimed by Fasani it was a terrific tackle by Fasani Stephen Williams on your screen looks to be in some pain as well now the Eagles have made a change Filippo's come out the centre half forward and their respective opponents have gone with them. Danny Hughes to centre half back for Port. Neiman got the ball. Now Geneva. Borlais pushed it out into space. First man there, Brewer. He's played a terrific game tonight. Now Northeast and Brewer. Now Northeast just didn't have the base to go with him. Now Setri. Northeast. Hutton. Gee, where's he been for a little while? We haven't sighted him. He was a star in the second quarter. And underneath that one, Hannah Marks. That's Sean Hannum. Sam Phillippo would be breathing a big sigh of relief because his attack on the ball or his take of the ball was very poor there at half forward. Tim Ginova mopping up, doing well with the crumbs. Kicks out wide. Darren Smith the target. Up he goes. Couldn't control the football. Chance now for Pesh. The Eagles out of trouble again up toward right half forward. Here's Morford between the wing and half forward. Goes infield. Chapman danger signs here again. Good kick by Chapman. Clever stuff to Zilla. Number 56, Jason Zilla. Good kick. And took some courage to take that ball as well. As you saw, their eyes only for the ball. And it was just a wee bit tentative. The hands were out there and he was waiting for it to come. It never did. And now he has a shot from around 30 metres out. Reserves McGarry medalist. 40 metres out. Drop punt. Across the face. Through for a behind to the left-hand side. But a good build up there. He didn't look entirely confident. The eyes shot up very quickly. Hoping that ball would go through rather than actually punching it through. And the result was a point. Danny Hughes from full back elects to go to the outer side. Foster provides the lead. Gee, he did well just to recover it. I thought he'd lost it for a moment. Goes for the boundary line. We've had just on 21 and a half minutes of the third term. Well, Port Adelaide need their experience now. We saw David Hutton earlier in the quarter of about the 20-minute mark go off the ground. But uh, we've, uh, we've come to expect the experience of Port Adelaide. A huge crowd in attendance. We've come to expect Port Adelaide to bounce back. Be very interesting to see what they do from here. It's a 17-point ball game. The Eagles have the ascendancy. Pisani over the top of it. It was stolen away by Borlase. Well done, Daisy Borlase. Inside the 50-metre line, Hutton. Now, he spent 10 minutes off the ground. That's where he's been. Now, Brewer gets it back to Tate. Tate back to Brewer in the overlap. Tate, uh, Brewer, well done. And to the boundary line it goes. It's defended well, Jamie Tate, that man on your screen. Now, two ice packs on the leg there. He's not going to come yeah. back on like that, Stephen, is he? Well, I'm not too sure whose legs they look like. Stephen Williams. Stephen Williams, is it? There's a free kick been sorted out here. No. Bounce underneath the giant electronic scoreboard. Here's Rowan Smith with a high kick. Look at that. Eagles 12-9. Port Adelaide 10-4. And the mark has been taken by Darren Smith. Didn't go the required distance. Pisani gets his first touch. Now his second. He got it from his skipper, Schwarz. Quickly across now. Big chance now for the Eagles to storm forward. High kick. Getting back Phillips. Haven't seen much of him at the moment. We saw a lot of him in the first quarter. Picked up by Foster, who started on the bench. Ginnivan quick hands. Very well done. Now it's... Uh, that was Mead. Quickly across 
to Borlase. Borlase from the defensive side. Long kick. Oh, there's a loose man down here, but it's the Eagles and it's Brewer again. I'd love to see his stats. Wasted opportunity for Port Adelaide. Their run through halfback was excellent. They just couldn't finish it off. Yes, they needed to find the player. Now, Kennedy, he was holding his shoulder moments ago, but he looks okay now. Didn't find the man. Northeast just paddles it down. It's good defensive work in the finish by Port Adelaide. They only had two players there. Hughes got it away to Borlase. Borlase looked forward for Hutton, who was held, and the umpire agrees it's a free. So Port Adelaide have got a bit of work to do. We're almost into the three-quarter time break, and they need a quick goal here. Bogey man Darren Smith missed that one. Pisani loves the physical confrontation, Pisani. Gets it off. Filippo missed it. Now, this is Steven Zilla. Off it goes towards centre-half forward. Morford missed it. Foster. Well, the Eagle fans were looking for a free kick there. They said Morford was taken too high. Hannah at the back door. It's Kennedy. Two bites of the cherry. He looked okay there. He looks fine. Filippo got away into space. Filippo's too active for Hughes. They'll have to think about something at centre-half backcourt, Adelaide. Well, you could say the same perhaps for Shackey and Phillips, but to Shackey, he really hasn't been the damaging player, but Taylor has been. Feeds it off now to Jason Zilla. A high ball to half forward. Oh, it was almost a mark to the Eagles, but was, as the siren sounds, at three-quarter time, it's the Eagles by 17 points. Well, it was a good quarter by the Eagles. They kicked 5-1. Port Adelaide could only muster the three straight goals, and it was a quarter where the Eagles bounced out. Made 10 goals, 4-64. Trail the Eagles, 12 goals, 9-81. And Port Adelaide fans sitting at home would realise what their side can do from here. But can the Eagles find a new dimension and hold off Port Adelaide? Zilla got the ball from Schwartz. Gee, Schwartz has had some important possessions at midfield. The ground it goes. Well done, little fella. This is Stephen Zilla, but he got upended beautifully by Lyle. And still Chapman working hard for the ball, but it's across the line and out of play. Play just on 30 seconds of the last quarter, perhaps the most important 10, 15 minutes for the Eagles in 1993 who knows they've had a lot of trouble with Port Adelaide over the last couple of years nice take there the Eagles now with a big chance to go forward that was Rogers high kick very close to the boundary line out of bounds and they have had some troubles with them in fact on their last four occasions the Eagles have copped a bit of a belting except uh, my recollection there was about a four-point ball game mid-season down at Elberton last year but uh, the Eagles really have been no match for Port Adelaide. The Eagles are 12 9 81. They lead Port Adelaide at the moment, 10 4 64. Once again, out of bounds. And there'll be a throw in on the Western Wing. In fact, I think it was the second semi final where Port Adelaide were really rude to the Eagles. They beat them by about 40 odd points. And I think that's what uh, really hurt their confidence because they then went down in the preliminary final to Glenelg. But tonight they have the opportunity of exacting revenge. And uh, they're showing a new dimension of uh, physical vigour, the Eagles. Neville Roberts, who's ju just joined, it's a long way up, uh, Neville, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I said I need oxygen. <laughs> it's, just, it's a very long way up. But uh, Brian Cunningham made that point at, uh, at three-quarter time. Uh, the Eagles really taking him up to them on the body-to-body -body level. So the measuring stick, Port Adelaide, gives us the ability to measure the improvement of the Eagles. They lead by 17 points, two minutes into the final quarter. A very good crowd here at Football Park supporting the SA footy scene. Morford punched it forward. Setri did likewise, but again it's Schwarz with an important possession. He goes towards half forward. Pushed off the ball with Stephen Zilla. Well done, Brad Lyle. In the finish, he didn't, but he got support from Geneva. Now Lyle handballs it away. Well, Northeast kicked in danger, I thought. The umpire agreed, but he's allowed the advantage to play. And Schwartz again. Vital possessions in the opening minutes of this game. Taylor set himself. Shackey got it out the back door. Pesh over the top of the ball. Can he get clear? Tackled by Foster. He goes to ground. Rosonico off the ground. There's some good desperation down there for Port Adelaide. Hutton worked in hard for the ball. And Stephen Zilla holds Hutton in over the top of the ball. And if you'd like to experience all of this again, you can purchase a copy of a Foundation Cup video grand final here between Port Adelaide and the Eagles from the ABC bookshop and the Meyer Centre. So back with play, Pisani over the top of the ball, Rowan Smith tackled him. Stephen Geyer got tackled by North East. It ricochets out. This is Jason Zilla now pays. Chapman, he's got better. And short outside the 50 metre line is Big Romano Negri. So the boy from Tasmania all six foot nine of him he elects to go short and underneath that one Filippo missed that one got two hands for it this is Steven Zilla just inside the line centers it up beautifully who's there Shackey under pressure from Phillips Phillips hasn't done too bad a job Schwartz again Hutton 
27 is Port Adelaide, Hutton. 38 is Pesh over the top of him, and that's a dead heat. And John Carl using all his uh, people off the bench. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of interest there from our mustachioed friend. But uh, Jack uh, making full use of his bench, remembering that he benched three players for uh, disciplinary reasons. And that surely was a disadvantage to open up the bounce. The Eagles still lead by 17 points. Tim Ginever working hard. So too Rowan Smith. Now Pesh who steals it. Kicks it back inside uh, toward the uh, full forward. Getting back as Rosonic. Oh, kicked off the ground by Ziller. A goal. Oh, well done. Second goal there for Stephen Ziller. The Eagles are 13, 987. Gee, they wanted that, didn't they? Port Adelaide. 10 goals, 4, 64. And uh, again, the Eagles getting uh, their small men around the ball. It was Pesh who uh, did a lot of work on that. Uh, that southeastern pocket to bring it in and at the bottom of the pack Ziller again for his second good work by the little fella so five Eagles have two goals of peaches at peace as they lead 13 9 to 10 goal four Rowan Smith couldn't get clear Pisani working hard in the midfield gets it off to Gaia down from the back pocket out it goes to Pays Foster was there to try and have a crack at uh, Pesh he goes to ground that could be holding the ball it is it's a free to Foster he worked hard for that and uh, they've got Grimm in the ruck, and uh, it appears that uh, Chalmers at full forward, and uh, they really have to fire him up. The test fairly and squarely at the feet of Port Adelaide now. Well, John Cale has admitted that they've got some problems up in the full forward lines. Their trump card, Chalmers, playing at full forward. Kennedy gives it off to Brewer. Look at the run of the Eagles. They've got plenty of support. Sean Hannum, a long ball to half forward, and Shackey one-handed. Phillips over the top of him, wearing him like a glove. Hughes got it out cleverly to Geneva, northeast, now to Grimm. He also had a run with uh, West Torrens a few years back. Didn't make the great, now he's with Port Adelaide. Oh, a one-handed to Darren Smith, he's the bogeyman. If anyone can win it for Port Adelaide, this fellow can. Back it goes to Hutton, a high ball to half forward. And McKay was pushed out from underneath that ball. Tate got the kick away, but only to space. Kicks into the pocket now. Shea Cockatoo Collins, this way, that way, this way and that way, and now out of bounds on the full. And the Eagles supporters love it. Well, it was good, uh, what in football terms was grid work. Chapman had him caught for space, didn't fall for the ball, watched his body, and finally uh, a mistake was caused. Good work by Chapman. So Brewer to take the kick. He's had a sensational evening too, Brewer. He's killed Rowan Smith. Here it is again in replay. It looked like... Uh, like the yippies, a mistake. Very close to the line. Chapman keeps it in. No, he doesn't. It's out of bounds. Jerry, the man we were talking about. Very interesting skill that by Chapman. Just keeping his eye on the hips of Cockatoo Collins. It's a terrific skill. Romano Negri goes for the back door. Schwartz, and that's about his seventh possession in this final turn. Chapman picks up number four in this turn, and Greg Phillips doing everything he can to keep Port Adelaide in this game. Switches the direction of play. Danny Hughes drifting down from defence. Now Geneva at midfield. Spears it forward. Out on the lead and it's McKay. Big well, he's catch. taken a couple of big grabs already. He has two goals. He kicked three goals against West Adelaide a few rounds back. And that's a big catch set up by, uh, by this skipper at uh, centre-half back. The kick in was good but the lead was... Uh, was matched so McKay 40 meters out directly in front gee it's going to drop short and wide it's hit the post things not going right for Port Adelaide but there's still plenty of time for them to get back and win this one well we're all uh, we're all educated uh, scoreline 22 points in it we're all educated in Port Adelaide's uh, willingness to fight things out to the end and uh, I certainly wouldn't be tipping the Eagles at this stage but uh, I tell you what uh, the Eagles would have to collapse from here a big Romy Negri's got the football, not for long. Kicks to the wing. Oh, right over the top. Almost the mark there, taken by Moore, but couldn't quite control it. Kicked off the ground, up toward left half forward there by Michael Gaffney. Spear about to come on for the Eagles. So Winter making a change here. Just interesting to see who's going to come off. The Eagles are 13-9. Port Adelaide, 10 goals, 5. Negri won the tap. I think you'll find it'll be Chapman that'll come off the ground. You might be right, Rocky. Now Pisani towards the grandstand wing. Morford, two bites at the cherry, couldn't take it. Northeast over the top of the ball. He's still working very hard. Negri, a kick behind play, did well, the big man. Now twice there at half forward. Scotty Morford's gone over the top of the pack. He's gone up with one hand, and uh, it's uh, 
a bit of undisciplined play there. They need to keep doing the same disciplined things, the Eagles. They need a fellow at the bottom of the pack. They don't need any individual stars. Just a good team effort. Keep conforming. Keep their cool. Keep the numbers around the footy. That would have been Bruce Winter's message at three-quarter time. Well, they know. we know that Port Adelaide can come back, Neville, will they? Well, I think they're a bit fragile tonight, uh, particularly up forward, and it's been a sensational effort given the, the seven or eight players they've got out, but uh, my money's with the Eagles at the moment. Here's Setri's kick, two or three Port Adelaide players. Brewer, that was a bit lucky, Tate. And away they go, Hannum kicks away from the danger zone, getting underneath it as Shacky. Gee whiz, not sure whether that was intentional, but he did get one in the head. Yeah, I think that's a bit of emotion from the stand, not as bad as it... Uh, Played up a little bit by Shacky and good on him. He's got the kick. That's all he wanted. Short passes on. Rowan Smith comes in late. That was like David and Goliath as uh, the kick was meant for Negri. Long one by Fasani. Almost uh, the mark taken by Filippo. Couldn't quite control the football. He chases after it again. Pays with an opportunity. Duck the head. They've got him. And the umpire says it's against Port Adelaide. So pays to get the free kick over the shoulder. And it was Kennedy that's come off the ground and Spears replaced him at full back. Oh, they need this, don't they? Wouldn't this make things interesting? The 26-year-old Crows player. Well, he's, uh, he's by reputation not a long kicker of the footy. He's got to kick 50 metres here. It's a still night and uh, heavy dew. It'll test his leg. An important one. 50 metres out. Drop punt. Fall short, up they go. Negri was there. Taylor, round the corner. Gee whiz, that was a great effort. Free He's kick. missed. Is it a free kick? No, it's a, it's a point. I uh, oh. saw the umpire running in. I thought he might have picked up one for the Eagles there, but isn't that the value with Taylor to make something out of nothing? Uh, those Eagles supporters or Port Adelaide supporters have got a bit of humour, but uh, he's a volatile player, Taylor, and uh, he can drop out of a game just as quickly, though, David. I'll bet you they're Eagle fans, Neville. They're smiling as wide as themselves. Setri just stole that ball from Brewery. Did well to feed it off to Hutton. Hutton is still running. He's got plenty of run left in those legs. Oh, Darren Smith just missed it. Spear pushes it towards the line. It's terrific defensive work, but I feel there that Darren Smith could have claimed that. Well, he had the sit, but uh, I think Darren Smith is just feeling the wear and tear of an evening where he's been expected to just do too much. He's at centre-half forward, he's at full forward, and uh, between him and Chalmers, they would be absolutely spent by now, I would think. Still 23 points to the margin, still time for Port Adelaide. Hannum, away from danger for the time being. Kicks to the wing. Grim, the hand pass to Bond. Needs to pick up and didn't. Pesh has got him, he's worried him out of it. Oh, well done by Bond, good persistence. The umpire calls play on, long kick into the forward pocket. Two against one, back down there against uh, McKay. Very good work in the back though by Guy. Clears away again. Negri, was he pushed out? Umpire didn't seem to think so, he's a long way away. It's out of bounds and the Eagles lady can't believe it. It's got plenty to say, but uh, Port Adelaide, they need, to, they need to get their run going. They need blokes like Rowan Smith, Geneva, Collins, Bond, all those players to really get in it and really force the issue. Run across the line, carry the footy and give Chalmers and Smith a bit of a chance. Bond around the corner. It sits nicely for Hannum. He's had a pretty good game since coming on late in the first term. Borlais missed it. It ricochets forward from Jason Zilla into space. Borlais nicely placed kick. It's wide to Foster. Now, Port Adelaide can run. They are not out of this game yet. Almost 12 minutes gone. They trail by, oh, what's that, eight, 23 points. And deep in defence, it's Spear. And Foster uh, right away from Warford on that occasion. I don't know what he was doing 30 yards ahead of the play. If uh, they'd lost the footy, he would have been right out of it. The numbers would have been with the Eagles. Now, the next 10 minutes is where the Eagles need to concentrate. Great mark taken by Big Romy Negri. That's the sort of thing they need. Yeah, it's a great mark, and uh, look at him throw himself into the play. He and Neiman have shared the ruck uh, alternate quarters, one apiece. Shacky suggesting that he kicks it long. Shacky's in the middle of four Port Adelaide players there, and it's out of bounds. Well, there's Darren Smith off. What do you make of that, Neville? Well, as I said earlier, I think Darren Smith and uh, Chalmers, the bigger fellows, have had uh, a lot expected of them tonight. They've had to play the entire half forward. It's a big ground out there, Mark, and uh, it particularly it's still only March, and players wouldn't be as fit as they might be, uh, say, in June. So I would think that Darren Smith would be absolutely exhausted. Might well be that at the 13-minute mark of this final quarter, as we come to you live from Footy Park Stadium, that John Cale would be thinking about West Adelaide this Saturday. Borlase, or the seven and a half thousand dollars he might pick up in the next seven minutes if they can get out of this. 
That's the difference between winning or losing tonight. Seven and a half first prize, ten for the losers. Gaffney, the Sydney Swans draft, goes to half forward. Tape did well to push it forward. Rowan Smith feeds it off to McKay on the 50 metre line. He's up in it. Geyer, front position, did pretty well in front of Centry. And it's wider still to Hannum on the outer side who can run. Yes, wasn't that good. Now Hannum, short little chip passes, good to Morfitt. The experienced Morfitt. About to go short, about 40 metre short pass is good to Pays. Possession football at the moment. Into the pocket, Philip Pope. Gee, we don't see this very often against Port Adelaide. Danny Hughes, a good metre, two metres away. Philip Pope squares it, Shackey again. Oh! Shackey's got it. Yes, and uh, I think you can make that point about uh, Danny Hughes. He's. Uh, and uh, Shane Grimm just having a swing at the ball. It was a little late, you might say. But uh, the Eagles now playing very confidently and they're using the ball. So very hard for players like Phillips and Danny Hughes. Uh, all their opponents need is, is one yard, particularly a player like Shacky, who uh, is very quick off the mark. So whilst they've got possession of the football, they intend to keep it. And uh, while that happens, the clock ticks away. Well, Lawrence, if you can kick this, you might be able to get the Eagles home here. They lead by 23 points. He's already got two. Lawrence Shacky with a long kick. It'll fall short and it's offline. And it's out of bounds in the right forward pocket. Grimm did pretty well there. He just uh, punched the ball towards the boundary line. Didn't bother to concede the point. As it comes back into play, Grimm took it from Ruck. Romano Negri roved it. Kicks towards space. Filippo couldn't claim it. It's picked up by Stephen Zillery. Snaps towards goal. But it's offline and through for behind. At that point, a pretty vital one. It makes the margin now 24 points. And Port Adelaide need better than four goals. Well, with about five minutes to go, that's not impossible. And uh, that would be a mirror image of John Cale's face. He's got uh, problems here tonight. But uh, as we've said, you'd expect them with so many players out. Opportunity now for Bond. He goes over the top into space as Burton. He's got the run. I need to score off of this uh, forward thrust to be a chance. But in the way, Brewer, it has to be one or two of... Uh, the Eagles' best tonight. He's been unstoppable at half-back. Great future he has. Towards centre wing, great Mark Burton. And he certainly hasn't given it away. He'll take it right to the line, this fella. Youngster, 29 games under his belt and uh, a real future. Geyer under the ball, couldn't take it. Hannum, he's played well since coming on in that first quarter. Geyer, always steady, plenty of experience. He wants Romy, called out of it by Taylor. Was the wrong call, probably should have called him in, but it came off again. Forward they go. Underneath it was that was Filippo. Rosonico with a chance. He's forced to the boundary by Zilla. Danny Hughes gets a quick kick away. It's into space. Negri with an opportunity. Over shot from 50. Puts it up high in front. Almost taken there by Shackey. Couldn't make it. They've got the numbers, Port Adelaide. Phillips is steady on to Hughes and they're out of strife. Well, they're not out of strife yet, uh, Neville, because they're kicking straight to Morford. Off it goes to Pisani, who's 30 metres out, and they're back in more strife but the kick is wide. So a point to Pisani at the 16 and a half minute mark of the final quarter. It's the Eagles 13 goals, 12. Port Adelaide 10 goals, 5. And I think you could say it's all over for Port Adelaide now. Well, five, six, seven minutes. Uh, I wouldn't say so, but uh, uh, I, if I had to take a bet, David, it'd certainly be with the Eagles, but uh, you'll see Port Adelaide. They'll run it out and... Uh, the Eagles wouldn't want to let up one bit because uh, Port Adelaide are noted for that. We know it, and they can kick goals very, very quickly. They've got players that can do that. Shackey, though, on to Swartz. This might hurt them if it goes through. Skipper's offline, and he wouldn't be happy with that. That was a pretty straightforward goal, and uh, that's right. You can tell us afterwards. We'll be listening for it. 10 goals, 5, 65. The Eagles, 13, 13, 91. As the kick-in comes into Bond. John Cale has uh, led a couple of night premierships one with West Adelaide one with Port Adelaide you'll now be uh, two for two so two wins and two losses from four night grand finals Bruce Winter one from one and there he is he'd be pretty smug right now well I know what you mean David he'd be pretty happy with his team and so on and uh, there's the attendance here at Football Park tonight 19,488 we're covering it live on ABC Sport we're as it happens yeah we expected about 20,000 so the South Australian public Really supporting it. And there's Kennedy. We mentioned during the uh, call that he hurt a shoulder. And now Bruce Winter, for safety first, resting him for Saturday. Well, making sure he's OK and uh, icing up that shoulder. Hopefully it's not too bad. 
Bond again. He's been busy. Around the corner he goes. Pushes it forward over the centre line. Hutton there. He's kicked two off his wing. He's been a dangerous player. He always is. And uh, he's the player that uh, a lot of wingmen are frightened of in terms of uh, which way he's going to go. Always got a decision to make on Hutton. Down, Nick Pesh. And let's hope that's not serious too. Trainers attending to him. Looks like an ankle. Again, Bond in the thick of things. Players tired and weary. Although it's not hot, it's certainly uh, certainly warm. And uh, Bruce Winner now, he's directing everything. He's taking no chances. He's just calling for Pesh to come off. There'll be an interchange made as in Ruck Brewer goes high over the top and it's out of play. So the Eagles now playing safety first football. They're playing the boundary line, making sure that Port Adelaide can't open up the goals and get a run on. Yes, and it's tired football now. You'd have to say that uh, getting a run on from here would uh, just require an Herculean effort. I don't think anyone's capable of that in March, but it's been a good effort by Port Adelaide even so. They've got eight players out. Yes, yeah. well, that's a fair comment, but... Uh, the Eagles are doing what Norwood didn't do a couple of weeks back then, bottling up the play and making sure that uh, Norwood aren't able to get an easy run on football going. Gaffney, a quick kick into space. He's been forced to hug the boundary line, and yet again, Rogers takes it across the line. Yes, indeed, and uh, been a pretty tight defence, the Eagles. Spear's been on and off the ground, but uh, he's been serviceable. Probably the most fragile of their defence without being unfair to him. Kennedy's off the ground with his shoulder, but he's had a good night too. Brewer's been one of their best. Rogers, good. So it's a pretty tight defence. They've done a good job, and there's the man that's uh, led them all night, Gaia. Yes, he pushes it towards the boundary line still. They're playing that area very, very well. Brewer got it back to Pays now to Pesh. He's up. He seems OK. It's a kick wide. Gaffney across the line. It's very interesting having a look at who's due to come back for the Eagles. They've still got Stuart Nickel, Simon Neve, Paul Primke, Robbie Lynch, Alan Schwartz, Michael Tobias, Matt James, maybe Wayne Wiedemann, and David Foote. So plenty of depth starting to uh, develop with the Eagles. Well, it's uh, you would count on having maybe five or six players injured, but uh, in that list you gave us there, David, there's some fantastic talent in that. So Bruce Winter and the Eagles, uh, I guess getting the rewards of their merge a couple of years ago. Now they've got players, a lot of players around the 40, 50 and 60 matches, uh, young veterans, if you like, and a bit of depth with it. Rogers kick is a high one. Rosonico spoiled from behind. It goes towards Morford. To, he couldn't get it clear. Pays his claim, but there's a free kick. It's a Port Adelaide free. The advantage allowed to play on. Gaffney on the outer side. Lifts the eyes, goes long. McKay the target. Oh, well spoiled tape. It goes to ground. Geyer over the top of it. The vice captain feeds it out to Brewer. Spear is there. Look how they bottle it up, the Eagles. McKay for. Worked hard for the ball, but umpire Mark Westgarth will bounce. Good effort, but He's uh, one of the triers all night. He's uh, he snipped in with a couple of goals tonight. One in the first, one in the third. Opportunity now as the siren goes and the Eagles fans jump for joy here at Football Park. It's the Eagles, 13-13-91. The Port Adelaide, 10-5-65. And they've been successful in their first final as a merged club. Bruce Winner, naturally, absolutely elated. He won't show too much emotion, but uh, deep down, he would be absolutely excited about this win. So the final scores, the Eagles running out, Foundation Cup victors, their first is the Merge Club. The Eagles, 13 goals, 13, 91, have defeated Port Adelaide, 10 goals, 5, 65. And down on the boundary line, we've got Stephen Tree. Full Park, the Eagles take on South, and Central's take on Sturt. There'll be no telecast of that match. So a big afternoon of football Saturday afternoon following on Neville. Should be a terrific season. Finishes for season 1993. On behalf of Neville Roberts, Mark Aston, Stephen Trigg and all the ABC football team, it's a very good night from Football Park.